Army and uh, standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for joining us uh, this evening. Uh, if we can uh, move on to item number three, roll call. Councilor Donovan? Here. Councilor Rowan? Here. Councilor Foley? Here. Councilor St. Clair? Here. Councilor Hayes? Here. Councilor Chiazzo? Here. Chairman Bayline? Here. And moving on to item number four, general public comments. This is an opportunity to get up and speak on any item that is not on the agenda. You do have three minutes to speak. If you would like to come to the... You can't hear me from here? Can't hear you. <laughs> they they got to make them longer or something. So I apologize. It's most uncomfortable trying to do that, though. But if you'd like to speak, uh, you're welcome to come to the podium. If you can state your name and, and address. Joanne LeBlanc, 10 Dover Street, Pine Point. The water at Pine Point Beach has been taken over by the past several summers by an invasive species of red algae and seaweed. It will not be going away as it has no natural enemies. It is fibrous, hair-like, and dark red. It rolls around near the surface and gets stuck in your hair and clothing. A portion washes up on the, with the tide and stays on the beach. It is thick and messy, attracts flies, and has a terrible odor, even more so when it dries out. The beach cleaning equipment is able to pick it up when it is wet or still damp. But when it dries out, it becomes compacted and heavy, and the machine cannot handle it. And, in fact, the type of removal system needed to is prohibited by environmental rules. So the more days between cleaning, the higher and denser and ter more terrible the smell becomes. Last summer was the first time the beach was cleaned twice weekly. Thank you, Mike Shaw, for facilitating that. Mm -hmm. the, the result was a noticeable improvement, so much so that returning tourists and visitors remarked upon it. Yankee Magazine recently described Scarborough as having pristine white sand beaches. Oh, I hope that can, that can still be true. With Maine summers being so short, it would be a shame and a real hardship to many people and businesses who depend on returning tourists' revenue for the budget, and, uh, excuse me, for the budget to be approved as it is presented tonight. In last Friday's leader, it was noted that beach revenue more than covers beach expenses. On behalf of the, of the taxpayers and summer visitors, I ask that you amend the proposed budget to include beach cleaning at Pine Point at least twice a week for the months of July and August. Thank you. Elaine Richard. Five Reef Lane, 2080 East Grand. Um, the, fin the Finance Committee had a meeting which included in their proposed budget a reduction of $6,000. This $6,000 will happen by reducing the number of beach cleanings at Pine Point. In perspective, the school budget is about $43 million. Before you dismiss this beach cleaning issue and accept that it is not an important consideration, I would like to give you a little history. For decades, and I've been here decades, many of us have asked the town repeatedly for once a week beach cleaning for July and August. And we finally got that. Three years ago, we asked for a second beach cleaning during those months to improve an unhealthy and damaging condition affecting Pine Point Beach. We were told there was no money in the budget. So we went from asking to begging. We got hundreds of people to sign petitions. We wrote letters. We came here to the council and begged in our three minute slot of time. You gave the additional beach cleaning to us for one year and now you plan to take part of that away. Now we start over again. Is there $6,000 somewhere? When we started asking for the additional beach cleaning, we were a little naive about how the much revenue the beaches in the town of Scarborough generate. The revenue from the beaches is over $300,000. That's from parking, concession stand, money, season passes, and boat ramp fees. So when we ask, 
please, can we have a little more of that money that is generated by people using the beaches for the purpose to alleviate a beach problem? The answer should be yes. If you were to really look at the problem, you would see that twice a week sometimes it's not enough. We've had weeks when the beach has been cleaned on either a Tuesday or Friday, and the day after that, the red algae rolls in, and you've already heard what that means. Right now, we are just asking for the return of the $6,000 and the twice a week cleaning. Maybe it can come out of the reserves. We've already taken 2.1 million out. For the future, I want you to look at Pine Point not just as a revenue generating entity, but as a valuable resource. We want you to address the needs of Pine Point and any other beach in Scarborough like you address the school needs and the municipal needs. So let's treat our beaches as the resources they really are and fund the issues that adversely affect them. Thank you. Hello, my name is Michael Sawyer. I live down here on Trackview Terrace. And my, uh, what I want to talk about is the dog park. Uh, right down here, we have a nice park. If you go across that little bridge over by, that would be a nice area for fencing so we can let our dogs run. Only place we can do that is down Pine Point. And you got to only, and that's only certain times of the day. And um, there's 28 houses just came in behind me. And I, I swear over half of them have dogs. <laughs> and, and then Sawyer Road's always up and down. People are walking and, uh, with the dogs, not, not with the dogs. But um, I think my dog needs and deserves a place to play. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Suzanne Foley Ferguson, 331 Black Point Road. Um, I noticed on the agenda that there is a rules and policy, so I apologize if this is on the agenda because I'm not really sure what your second reading or your proposed amendments, I haven't been following it. But I did want to inform you about what's going on at the state level regarding the pesticide ordinances. Mm -hmm. And maybe you do, maybe you don't know about it, but at the, um, the let, there is all kinds of um, lobbyists up at the state house that are trying to convince the legislature to not allow municipalities to uh, have their own pesticides and herbicides or ordinances. And um, it's, a, it's a problem because they say, oh, they're all willy-nilly. They say the kind of the arguments that are happening at the state house are that, that um, you know, they didn't do a good, these municipalities didn't do a good job. They didn't interview uh, experts. They don't have people on both the pesticides group as well as the natural. And you know, in this town, we really worked hard on it. Um, and it's been, I think, pretty successful. It takes a long time to go natural. People, I think, are appreciating the people, at least I know, that have kids who play sports on the fields, appreciate that their kids are not going to be uh, putting their heads next to cancer-causing chemicals. Um, so anyway, how this relates to you folks is that they're trying to eliminate part of what is home rule. And in the main state has always had very strong home rule authority for municipalities. And they're trying to take it completely out of your hands. Um, I know that in the past, uh, Chris has wanted to go up to speak on behalf of the entire council, and I know that you were going to talk about that at, at your your uh, second reading, uh, or at your um, rules and policies, but I think there are things like school budgets where it is important for you guys to speak as one. And in this particular case, not just as one, but maybe with other communities also that have uh, pesticide ordinances, because there's about 11 of them, I think, in in, in the state. And we're all concerned about it, but we don't have much time to go up there. But I just wanted to, you to be aware of that speaking as a full council and or at least directing your manager to speak is, is really important. That's it. Thanks. Thank you.
Good evening. My name is Mo Erickson. I live down in Pine Point. <clears throat> I have two things I want to address to the council tonight. The first is just to remind you that um, myself, I, I barely got a 2% raise this year, so I don't know how I'll cover my tax increase, but I guess we'll have to figure out a way to budget my family. So I hope you guys will budget the municipality and the school and everything else accordingly to keep in mind mere commoners such as myself who can't afford a yearly increase of $100, $200, $300 every year. So um, I just wanted to put that out there. <clears throat> the second thing I wanted to talk about was I was told uh, by a neighbor um, that potentially the uh, Bailey's Lobster Pound and the um, new barbecue um, restaurant that they're going to be opening up are trying to have live music there. I don't know if that's true or not, but I can tell you that um, I can't imagine these two places in particular having music because they have no parking. I don't know if you've seen the parking situation that happened at the Bait Shed and La Bailey's Lobster Pound last year. Um, they had valet parking and it really was just people standing in the road stopping cars and people getting out and people trying to go by them. It was a horror show. Um, I know at the, they don't have space for any live music there. Ms. Erickson, actually we will be uh, having a conversation under order number 17-047. So if you'd like to speak to that then, that would be appropriate. Okay, I will, <laughs> thank you. Anybody else that would like to um, share a public comment on any item that is not on the agenda? Not seeing any, we'll close the public comment section. Moving on to item number five, minutes for May 3rd, 2017's regular meeting, if there's a motion. Move approval. Second. Any edits, uh, comments, or modifications to the clerk? Not seeing any, all in favor? And that is unanimous. Moving on to adjustments to the agenda, we have none this evening. Items to be signed, um, this is the treasurer's uh, warrants, I'll sign those as the meeting goes on. And moving on to um, first order of business is order number 17-042. It's a seven o'clock public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendments to chapter 302, town council rules and policies manual. Are there any public comments regarding this item? Not seeing any, um, a motion from the floor. So moved. Second. Uh, comments, questions um, from the chair of the rules and policies committee? I believe this is the, still the same as we discussed last time in the appointments language. Yeah, so I have nothing to add from that last conversation. Okay. Um, if there's no other questions, Councilor Donovan? Um, just for the audience's benefit, uh, <clears throat> the appointments committee is taking on new responsibilities relative to advising uh, on matters related to um, contracts, uh, employment contracts, uh, uh, union contracts. Uh, and uh, I think it's uh, the <coughs> chair has suggested this change, and I think it's a it's a good one. I think we'll try to memorialize uh, some of it this year uh, in the committee work we're we're doing, and uh, uh, I I support this. Um, and just to expand that, there is an additional item in which we're formalizing um, the addition of a communications committee that um, um, we created this year, uh, something that we've been working on. So this formalizes that uh, committee now as a standing committee of the council. Any other questions, comments? Uh, I would just add, uh, the, 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 the first piece of this didn't come through rules and policies, which is why I didn't really have uh, a way to summarize it for the audience, but okay. that's it. Yeah, it was an appointments yep. that I handled it. Thank you. Not seeing any other comments, all in favor? And that is unanimous, thank you. The next item is order number 17-043, a seven o'clock public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendments to chapter 302A, Town Committee's Board's Manual, Article 1, appointment slash reappointment. And is there um, public comment on this item? Not seeing any, we'll close public comment and if there's motion from the council. So moved. Second. Any comments or questions? This is really, just as a summary, it's really in conjunction with the previous motion. They're just two separate sections of our rules and policies that had to be uh, changed, uh, but they're both consistent yeah. with the same topic. Um, if there's no other questions or debate, all in favor? And that is unanimous, thank you. And then uh, moving on to order number 17-047 is seven o'clock public hearing 
and action on the renewal and new requests for a special amusement permit from Black Point Inn, located at 510 Black Point Road, Bailey's Campground, located at 274 Pine Point Road, Libby Mitchell Post, um, 76, located at 40 Manson Libby Road, Loyal Order of the Moose, located at 19 Spring Street, the Landing at Pine Point, located at 353 Pine Point Road, the Clambake Inc., located at 352 Pine Point Road, and the new requests are Bailey's Lobster Pound, located at 78 King Street, and, and I, I apologize if I'm pronouncing it, Togella, Togello, LLC, doing business as the Garage Barbecue, or BBQ, located at 3, 3 East Grand Avenue. Is there anybody that would like to speak on this from the public? <laughs> <laughs> Again, Mo Erickson, I live down in Pine Point. Um, I'm not sure exactly what is um, special amusement permit. I don't know if that entails live music, but, um, you know, I guess it all comes back to these two restaurants in particular and having parking issues. I know that the Lobster Pound has some serious parking issues even before they had their bait shed because of that precarious corner and they really just don't have a big enough parking lot. Um, and the success of their business has been tremendous, but they um, don't have the parking to encourage any more people to come there for live music, certainly. The garage, I think they have 28 parking spaces for a 70-seat restaurant, a gift shop, and an apartment. And it is also on a corner. So unless they have a secret spot where they're going to have their patrons park, again, I really have a, um, I'm, I hope that they don't have live music because they just don't have the facility parking for it. And um, I don't know if you've ever, as I say, if you've ever been down there in the height of the season during dinner time, you will see that Bailey's Lobster Pound is a mess. And you will also see, I promise you, now with this garage and I'm sure it will be successful and I wish them luck but I just don't want I don't want parking to be uh, a hassle in Pine Point it never really was but it is becoming now the clam bake they have a gigantic parking lot I think if they're going to have live music if, if that's what indeed they're talking about with this special amusement permit then they have spots for it the landing they certainly have spots for it Bailey's campground um, you know, they're self-contained, so people generally don't, from the public, go in there to listen to music at Bailey's. So I just really um, encourage you guys to think long and hard before you let these net new restaurants have live music. Thank you. Ms. Erickson, I do want to clarify the special amusement does allow for the entertainment, in including not just live music, but uh, karaoke, sure. other type of entertainment okay. along with that. Joan Laurie, 21 East Grand Avenue, Pine Point. Um, I'm a neighbor six properties away from uh, the new barbecue restaurant, and I just wonder how granting um, that special um, amusement license ties in with the good neighbor ordinance that was just passed, because as I said, I mean, I'm six properties, but there are five others that are closer, so live music and a residential area, I'm not sure that's really a very good idea. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? So I am the subject of discussion. Um, and I just want to point out that Bailey's Lobster Pound is not 78 King Street. That's my home did, address. Did, did you mention your name? <laughs> I probably put, um, no, sorry, Susan Clow, Susan Bailey Clow. Um, I'm from both Bailey's Lobster Pound and the Garage Barbecue. Um, I'd like to speak to some of the concerns. Um, really, my uh, clearly there's a parking problem in Pine Point in general, <laughs> um, and I, I disagree that there hasn't been one up until now, but um, if I speak to parking issues at both of my properties, I can say that, uh, first of all, at the Bait Shed and the Lobster Pound, we've definitely tried to alleviate it, even though we already have the number of parking spaces required for what we have on our property. Um, one of the things that some for the other folks that spoke first I'd like to point out is that one of the ways I alleviated this was by paying for space in the municipal parking lot at a time of day when it's free for the rest of the world. <laughs> but we pay several thousand dollars a year to rent space in that parking lot, which should be going to beach cleaning. Um, and so, you know, we're trying to help the community in that way as well. 
and it also is helping to alleviate the parking in that property. Um, as to the garage barbecue, I do have a secret parking space, um, and it's 20 Snow Canning Road, which was part of what we were permitted for. We have additional parking spaces, which are 20, where we put all of our employees so that everything that's next to the building is for just customers. Um, so we have tried our best to, even though we were well within the limit of what the town requires, to alleviate any extra problems that might occur. Um, further than that, I'd like to make sure that everybody knows that I have no intention of having live big bands or something in the middle of the summer. Our intention was to do things on both ends of the season when it's slow because, no, we, we really don't want to do things when we're super busy. It's just not logical. The logical thing, and I didn't realize it was even going to turn into such a big deal because, really, I went to high school with Don Campbell and he offered to play the guitar on opening day <laughs> and I didn't know it was a big deal to get a permit. So we wanted to have one guitar player with an amp inside the building at uh, the garage barbecue and on the dock it, it's in a little alcove behind the building that faces only the water. Um, and I, like once again, one guitar player, I just don't have room for any more than that and I wouldn't want any more than that. So we're trying to do something very low key on the shoulders of the season, not in the center of the season. So we don't want to make any bigger parking problems than already exist in the whole beach area. I mean, it's, it's bad for everybody down there. Even the clam bake, last weekend when it was raining, the clam bake was parking across the street in our parking lot, you know, so it's, or right next to our building, and it's just any on busy days that's what happens down there. So we don't want to make that any worse than that, and we want to make sure that our music is you know low key. And I I don't think that people I think that people are expecting much much bigger entertainment than I was intending to have. So thank you. Thank you very much. Any other public comments? Come up to the. I'm Roland Grenier, and I own the property at 88 East Grand Avenue uh, down in Pine Point. And with all due respect to um, the previous speaker, and I can appreciate where she is coming from, that they can only do so much and only want to do so much. The point is, if you give a permit, that allows more than they intend to, it still allows it. And if there's any change, it's still allowed. If you can issue the permit with the uh, provisions that she just spoke to, then it's fine. But if you simply issue a permit that allows much more, then if it comes about at a later time, you're stuck with it. So please keep that in mind. I don't know whether you can um, issue a permit that has those provisions built in, but if you can't, then you really need to think about issuing the permit in the first place. Thanks very much. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else that would like to speak? Not seeing any, we'll close the public comment. If I could have a motion from the so moved. second. And questions from the council, uh, Council St. Clair. Um, I think one thing we have to keep in mind is that the permits are only yearly. So, in my opinion, because Bailey's has had such, um, I don't think we've ever, Tody, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, not since I've been here have we ever had a problem with any of their facilities or. Um, anything to do with them, um, it would, I feel like it would be okay to give them the permit for the year and then we revisit it next year and if there's a problem, we, it's, we're able to revoke it next year. Only for one year. Everybody has to renew every year. Every business has to renew. So I would hate to take that away from them, especially if what she's saying is accurate. I can't imagine that would cause this great problem and we're allowing a business to potentially do what they need to do to survive their business, and if it doesn't work, next year we know there's a problem, and we are very able to take that permit away from them. I don't know, I just, that's just my opinion. Councilor Chiasso? 
So if I could, a clarifying question through the chair uh, to the to the town clerk. Could could you please um, elaborate on what exactly is included entirely in a special amusement permit? I know it was live music. Uh, live music or karaoke or even a poetry reading. Hmm. Any any type of entertainment for the public. Does it have to be? Because they serve alcohol. That's the key piece, where they serve alcohol and they're having some form of entertainment, they are required to get a special amusement permit. And does it have to be amplified or could it be acoustic? Because it's any, no, it any be time of entertainment. Any type. Okay. And the second question, pro probably more for the town manager, um, which, which ordinance would supersede? Would the amusement permit, special permit, allow them to um, exceed the noise requirements of the good neighbors ordinance or which, which one would have authority over which would have jurisdiction? I don't know if I can answer that, frankly. Okay. The good neighbor ordinance was just put in place uh, that consolidated two existing uh, mm -hmm. ordinances. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I don't know the answer just because it's so brand new. So may maybe a better question would be <coughs> if, if there was a concern about noise in the neighborhood, what would a, what would a citizen have for recourse? Well, certainly calling the police department, they would uh, intercede, and more times than not, that would solve the problem. Um, I, I can't say for certain that it would solve every problem, but that would be the normal recourse. So this permit wouldn't allow them to basically be immune to that type of request or concern? No, I, okay. I, I expect not. Okay. Comments? Uh, Councilor Donovan? Uh, are we talking about Conroy's garage? Yes. Yeah. Okay, not uh, one of them, yes. Right, it's on the corner. Yes. Right. Mm. The, okay. The I one they're turning into sure. the barbecue. And, yes. and, the, and a question I had, I, I do think that the noise ordinance uh, prohibits any unreasonable noise that goes across onto a neighbor's property and it's, and it's unreasonable. So I, and the permit doesn't exempt them from the noise ordinance, so yeah. I think that's true. Uh, the uh, <coughs> permit itself, and I'll direct this question through the chair to the town manager, uh, can it have restrictions? Because the owner wants to be a good neighbor clearly by, by her representations. But the last gentleman who spoke is absolutely correct. But once it's done, if it's issued without limitations, uh, uh, you could have all good intentions initially, but Business is slow, so we're now doing it outdoors. And, and that could be a real problem, whether it's in the spring or the fall, the shoulder seasons, as was referenced. So, so um, through the chair, actually, um, I love these two guys. They give me all the information I need. That's why they whisper. There's actually, um, so what is being requested regarding provisions has been um, enacted previously. Um, one reference is in 2002, in which when Higgins Beach came for their special amusement um, uh, permit, we did provide um, one year and then we revisited and provided provisions at that time. And then most recently actually for the same, uh, at least the garage um, barbecue, um, this was dated May, no, when was it? This is just a memo from Tony. <laughs> this is the memo, so. But that's an actual provision we have on another special amusement yes. license. So an existing special amusement <laughs> license provision would read something like this. With the provisions that any outside functions may begin at 12 o'clock noon, and outside music will cease at 7 o'clock p.m. The license may be revoked by the board if, in their opinion, there is sufficient cause. So that's an example of one of I mean, that could I, be added. I, I think that it, it, it's, we've certainly gotten a lot of uh, feedback that people are concerned about this. Uh, and it is a residential neighborhood. So, uh, and the owner seems quite willing to uh, uh, be subject to certain reasonable conditions. And I think seasonal, uh, a seasonal use, which would be outside of July and August, uh, and I think indoors. I think it was also referenced. One of them is indoors. You can't do indoors. Yeah. The garage is all indoors. Garage all is indoors. Beach is outdoors. And the beach head is outdoors. No, we only have outdoors. Because you don't have any other. Right. But I'm more than happy. I'm to and we we close very early. I could even. So with uh, those three conditions, uh, uh, would you accept the motion to amend, or would you like to separate the? Okay, yeah. So um, I know, council. So if we, before we have the, any amendments, if I could, if anybody else wants to speak, and then we can go to the amendments. I know 
Council Foley had uh, wanted to make a comment. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think this is a really good example of a community changing and evolving, and um, businesses changing and evolving to survive. And so it's kind of, in a lot of ways, uncharted territory. Um, you know, usually when we see these things on the agenda, um, it's, you know, it's kind of a, just a going through the motions of approving this, these kinds of things. So I was a little bit taken aback by some of the emails. Um, and, I, and I think there were some very legitimate concerns raised, particularly around smoking. Um, and, you know, that would be something I would hope that could also be addressed is creating an area. I know you can't have smoking in your establishment either per state law, but um, that, that we don't want to push those people then across the street to the neighbors <coughs> where they're put smoking there too. So um, I'd be very comfortable moving forward with some provisions in place, and I'm also going to make a suggestion that, you know, perhaps as new things like this come to us, one of the things that would be helpful, um, like for me, it would have been to know if she was talking, you know, be very clear about what it is you're asking for. So one acoustic guitar player, uh, these certain hours, um, you know, and so when we get new requests that we know exactly what it is that they're intending to do, because um, that's not part of our protocol right now, and maybe that would be helpful for us. So I guess that's really, I mean, I, I have full faith that she wants to do the right thing and uh, isn't, you know, she, I believe, lives right there in the neighborhood as well, um, so wants to be a good neighbor both from a business perspective and a neighbor perspective all around, so. Any other questions, comments? Um, so I wanted to mention um, something. So if I take into consideration the comments that have been made and my own experience, there's actually three um, applicants within the nine that have a parking issue as related to their particular uh, facility. Um, Clambake, we heard stories about the fact that they can be overpopulated um, with their uh, guests. Um, I've seen it for the landing and their special guests in which people park up and down both sides of the street. And then the loyal of the Order of the Moose, and full disclosure, I'm actually a member of that organization in which when they have their um, special events, um, they do not have enough parking. And while they don't go on to Spring Street, they use another parking lot. Um, any amendment um, doesn't take care of the issue, which I heard the greatest, which is about parking. Um, this only takes care of a noise. And um, I'm supportive of that. Um, I'm a little concerned that we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves because no complaint has actually happened because the, the restaurant's not even open, so we have no really relevant facts about this particular business and how it's run. I think, though, if we're going to do it, I think you need to treat all applicants exactly the same. The provision should apply to every applicant. So that way it's fair um, and without just selecting one particular company versus <coughs> another. Because it's a pretty generic, as I read it, it's a pretty generic. It just says that you need to, you know, have that music between 12 noon and whatever the evening hour is um, and that we can have a right to remove it. And that should be the same rule for everybody. Okay, so that's good. Uh, on that, one clarifying question I would have would be, you know, different applicants may come from different zoning. So that would play into it for me. Um, and I see the one of the, the challenges here, I think, is that you know these are businesses embedded in a residential area versus you know O'Reilly's Care, which is on through one. Having entertainment is not right next to a house, so I don't know well, if I would necessarily agree, but yeah. that's okay. If you went to O'Reilly's on St. Patty's Day, that overflow <laughs> went into the residential area, so <laughs> it's a residential just as much as any other. So, but yes. So, I, I mean, I guess the zoning is supposed to take care of that. Uh, there aren't commercial uh, entities allowed in, uh, in restricted zoning areas for that particular reason. The zoning has to be appropriate for the use. Um, so, I, I mean, I guess uh, I, I'm always leery of making special exceptions and, and special considerations because it becomes a really difficult to manage if we do that for every single case. I think Councilor St. Clair made a great point. If it's for a year, um, garage isn't even really up and running yet. Um, I, and, and we know that if there is a concern or a complaint, there's a mechanism in place through the noise ordinance that it can be addressed immediately right then and there. Um, if enough complaints pile up, then obviously we as a council will, will reserve the right to act. But I think it's fair to give them a, a one-year conditional and, and come back and revisit it in a year. Council Rowan. Yeah, I'm wondering, <coughs> and the question through the, through the chair, is it possible in one of these provisions just to say that they, they're revocable, so the town council mm -hmm. can issue them for a year and yeah, revoke them. Are yeah. Oh, they're, they are anyway? Yeah. Great. I just hate to see this get too, you know, complicated. 
right out of the right out of the bat. I mean, I think it's one thing if we want to go back and look at our policy on how we consider special amusement permits. I think that's one thing. But I think it's a whole other ball game when we're sitting here and these people have all applied for this under the assumption of what has always been doled out in the past. So I think if we're going to make changes, I think that's great. And I and actually looking at it, I think you probably should. But I don't think that because it's a one-year stipulation and these people have already applied for these permits, I don't think it's fair to put them through that at this point. But I do think it's something we should look at in the future. Again, it's a year, um, one season. Councilor Don Donovan? I, I think I agree with Councilor Kazo that uh, the owner has been cautioned. Uh, we don't have any information about the, and I'd rather have whatever restrictions we impose be uh, smarter, uh, more informed, uh, and, uh, and consequently, I'll, I'll vote for this. <coughs> something oh, well, just selfishly I think was when I first saw it, it's a great idea yeah. you know sit on the dock and listen to some <laughs> music and that's great but I wasn't thinking about it as someone who lives across the street but I will support it as well thank you any other comments I'm not seeing any um, all in favor and that is unanimous thank you next item is order number 17-048 at 7 o'clock public hearing and action on the new request for a food handlers license and a liquor license from Michael A. Hogland III, doing business as Sirloin, located at 89 County Road, formerly the Countryside Butcher and Painted Turtles. <coughs> Is there any public comment regarding this issue? Oh, sorry, I thought she was standing up. I looked down, I thought she was coming to the podium. Uh, if there's no public comment, I'll close the public comment and a motion from the council. So moved. Second. Any comments or questions? No, there are not any samples. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I was saying. <laughs> Believe it or not, I wasn't going there. Um, do, do we know, is this the same owner with just a name change? <laughs> no, it's, it's the son taking over the business and revamping the whole business. Okay. And changing it to a certain one. Okay, okay. Thank you. Councilor St. Clair. So, I mean, we, know, we knew the issues with the previous, with his father. Mm -hmm. um, Tody, is everything, in your opinion, they're currently working with the planning department because they're doing renovations. Okay. And um, they're up to speed. Okay. Before we even brought this to the, the council, we asked that he had something in place for the planning department. Okay. And he did. He worked okay. with them. Yeah. Great. Good. Good to see. Any other questions or comments? Councilor Chiazzo. Samples. <laughs> Sorry. Not seeing anything relevant being said. <laughs> I'll move on to. <laughs> you know I'm kidding. I'll move on to uh, vote. Um, all in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you. Moving on to old business, order number 17-030, second reading on the proposed fiscal year 2018 municipal slash school budget. Um, with that, I would like to turn it over first to um, um, the town council's finance chair, uh, Peter Hayes. Yes, good evening, everybody. Um, I think we'll, we'll get up and tell a little bit of a story. So, Tom, is that, do I need to do anything? Or is it? No. Uh, you need to tell me when to advance the slide. We'll have two. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So what we thought we'd do tonight is a little bit different. This year it's been a little different process for us as we came together as both the Board of Education and the Finance Committee to work together to kind of work on the budget. It's been a challenging year. What we'd like to do is just kind of share with you sort of where we are and where we've ended up and, and just to kind of represent we both support where we are. We're going to have a final recommendation tonight. So with that, Jody, I think you had some comments, and I'll... Yes, I just have a few brief comments. Um, this year, I, ha I am Jody Shea. I am the chair of the School Board Finance Committee, and I had the pleasure of working with Peter as the Town Council Finance Chair. Um, we didn't know each other all that well going into this, but um, have developed a great working relationship, and I am proud of the work that we've done. I felt, again, this year was very different um, compared to previous years, and I think a lot of factors played into that. One being um, we had a new superintendent at the table who brought a new voice. Um, and I think also having the finance committees were both the same makeup of the previous years, and so we were able to build upon that relationship. And then over the last three years, um, the finance committees of both the town council and the school board have worked together um, not necessarily the same people, but with the same common goals. So 
um, again, we were able to build upon those relationships. It's been a very busy spring, and um, we've come a long way since we started just six short weeks ago, believe it or not. Um, on the first reading, April 6th, the town manager and superintendent presented the budget for first reading. At that time, the school expenditures were around 4.9% 4 4 increase, um, and non-tax revenues were 19% lower than they were last year. The town was looking at a tax increase of anywhere between 5.8% and 7.1%. Over the last six weeks, the joint finance committees have asked the town manager and the superintendent to make further reductions with the help of their leadership. The total reductions we ultimately asked them to find totaled approximately $1.8 million. Um, these refinements have been made in a thoughtful and strategic way, and we appreciate the hard work that went into making those choices. We are now looking at school expenditures increase of only 3.38%, the lowest in years. Uh, we are still looking at a huge loss of revenue, so that is ultimately what is driving the tax rate. Um, through incredible work by both the superintendent and the town manager, the projected mid-range tax rate increase has lowered to 3.49%, depending on the assessor's, assessor's valuation and any increased funding from the state. Um, the recommendation coming out of the, finance, the Joint Finance Committee is that 50% of any additional funds will be used this year to help lower the tax rate, and then 50% will be set aside for future years. Um, so again, thank you to Peter. It has been great. But also thank you to the um, other members of the Joint Finance Committee, Chris and Sean from the Town Council, and Carrie and Christine from the School Board. Your time and commitment are appreciated. A big thank you goes to the town manager and the superintendent and your leadership and department heads. Um, your commitment to cooperatively working, of co cooperatively working together has been unmatched and a huge benefit for our community. I, I think I speak for the whole board when I say special thanks to our leadership council who um, did some digging deep and um, found some further reductions when we asked. Thanks to the school board, the full school board, and the full town council. You all have attended extra meetings along the way in this budget cycle and been engaged, and we appreciate that. Um, and finally, a thank you to our community. Uh, the chair of the school board gets up here year after year and thanks our colleagues, but I think um, a really important thank you is to our community for um, supporting our schools and our town. Over the last three years, our joint committee has strived to maintain a predictable and sustainable tax rate. I promise I'm almost <laughs> done. <laughs> um, it's, with the tax increases consistently between 2.8 and 2.8 percent um, the last three years, we are proud of the work we've done, and we are also thankful to our community for supporting our students and our schools. Um, I thought it would be nice to tell you a couple things, a couple investments that we've done. Um, that are making a big difference in our district and um, things that we've invested in the last three years while again maintaining a sustainable average tax rate of 2.5 percent. Um, we have some of the highlights are um, the one-to-one -one computing is now K through 12 district-wide. We've expanded world language at the high school and middle school where world language is now core class for both seventh and eighth graders. Um, we have added six plus classroom teachers at the high school and revamped the schedule there to allow more elective courses to be um, a choice for students. They aren't turned away. Um, in order to meet the needs of increasing technology and hands-on experiences in all areas of learning, we've added a STEM teacher at Wentworth. And um, there are so many things like this that are happening and, and happen year after year with, with thoughtful um, planning, so we appreciate, um, again, the support from our community. And so for all of this, we thank you. We are proud of our students, and, and you all should be very proud, too, not just of our students, but also um, for making this community a great place for all of us to live. Thank you. Thanks. What she said. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought I'd just share with you in front of you are some, some numbers and sort of what we have reported out, as, as Jody had referenced, sort of our the Joint Finance Committee work and what we're recommending to be in front of you tonight about the budgets. I did want to highlight a couple things and just the, the sheets are also available on the chairs. If I can figure out how the little pointer works, I'm not sure it's... Oh, yes. I'm not aiming it right. Oh, yeah. There it is. Yeah. Uh, 
So I wanted to point out there's been a lot of conversation. All this is, is just taking some, some snippets of information that I wanted to share. And so if you look at the municipal budget, if you look at the expenditure line, that went up after the adjustments we're talking about at 2.2%. Um, if you look at the education line, their expenditures went up at 3.38%. And in total, the request is going to be about 7.4%. But you can see it's because there was a significant reduction in, in state revenue. So these two numbers have been talked about a lot, but these numbers, to think about where we are coming in at, at 2 3% on, on the type of year we've had are pretty remarkable. If we put that in context, one of the goals that the council has had is to come in with a 3% or thereabouts tax increase over time. And this is just showing for the last four years, even with coming in this year at about 3.5%, that average is 2.8% over that time period. So we're within that sort of goal that we set for ourselves. This was an extraordinary year. There took some an extraordinary effort to try to get to where we are. But this is really just trying to point out that we're within that time, that, that sort of range that we set for ourselves. Um, and then in addition down here at the bottom, the, as I said, the increase is about 2.8% over that time period. There is some possibility that there may be some additional state revenues. We don't know that at that time. If that does come in, Jody already referenced that part of that money will go back into relieving the tax and the other will go into reserves. So it's possible the overall tax rate will be lower than what we're talking about. And Tom, the next page maybe? And I think to put it in perspective, what a lot of people right. talk about, this is just organizing by all the surrounding communities around us what the tax rate is per thousand. So what is, what is the mill rate? What is the taxation per capita? And, we act, and actually what this shows is Scarborough, even with this increase, um, is still the third lowest in the community. Um, so our tax rate, the base is low. And if you look across, again, we talked about our tax increase being 3.49%. The average of all this community is 3.54%. So we're well within what other communities are experiencing also. So with that, what we're really, we're, we're coming for, proposing this budget that's in front of you. Um, you know, that, that I kind of talked about sort of the overall perspective where we are. We also know that next year is going to be a challenging year. We've done some of the heavy lifting this year to try to get us to where we need to be. Um, it's been a very collaborative process. What we're looking forward to next year, we're going to have to continue the conversation with what we think we did this year. But I think is, is the positive outcome for all of us is we really think we've built the foundation now that we can start to have some of the community discussions we need to have going forward. So with that, I think I will now turn it back to our, our formal process. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, everybody. And what I'd like to do is now open this up to public comment. If anybody would like to speak on the item, you're welcome to come up to the podium. You have three minutes. If you can state your name and address, please. Mike Turek, 11 Bayberry Lane. Mike Turek, 11 Bayberry Lane. Uh, I listened to that presentation closely. There's a lot of discussion about the money. The one thing that no one has mentioned so far is the people within the town, and I'd like to address that. For three years now, I've stood before the council telling them of an ever-increasing number of people who have approached me to tell me they're leaving Scarborough because of the taxes. None of them wanted to be named for a variety of reasons, mostly embarrassment. The last time I addressed the council, the number was 22. Last week it was 23. This week is 24. I sold my house. I watch my 80-year-old neighbor fret annually as the budget cycle plays out. She's given up a lot to stay in her home and still eat and pay for medicine. One widow told me that there is just too much month left at the end of the money. I'm now 71. I do not want the same thing to happen to me or my wife. It is my opinion the school board does not care. A member of the school board once told me that the board does not answer to the public. She said the board is a governing body, not a representative one. Just as a church is made up of people, not just the building in which the services are held, so is a town. It is my opinion that the BOE and the town council have forgotten that the town is made up of people is my sincere wish and hope 
that every school board member who supported these drastic budgets over the last years without regard to taxpayers' ability to pay, along with every town councilor who voted for them, will one day suffer the same fate I am today. Goodbye. Anybody else that would like to get up and speak? Hi, Suzanne Foley Ferguson, 331 Black Point Road. I am um, just going to mention one item I think I would like to ask for your consideration to eliminate your expected revenues in the budget for the meters at Higgins Beach. I've been, as you know, very, very involved in almost all of the public access issues uh, in this community whether it be dogs, whether it be the land trust, whether it be parks and conservation, parking issues, <clears throat> private ways, et cetera. So I'm very, very aware of what it means for public access. And you have included in your budget, I don't know, anywhere between eight and $20,000, which when we're talking about an $82 million <laughs> budget is piddly. Um, and what I do remember and what the citizens will remember is that the meters at Higgins Beach were discussed as a means to enforce the one hour uh, rule, not as a revenue source. And what I see this as is a policy change that is hidden in the budget. And you know who does that? The federal government all the time. They call it pork. <coughs> Well, I was going to say, I was going to say a certain party is doing it even more, but I won't. I won't get there. What I guess I'm saying is that this is a big policy issue. It's not just a budget issue, and I think that because it's such a small amount, I really would appreciate if you would, you know, just eliminate it. And if you want to start charging, um, and I'll just um, refresh your memory. We talked about the elderly people who walk their dogs daily, sometimes twice daily so that's 30 bucks that's 60 bucks a month you're adding to the elderly person who wants to come over to Higgins Beach Park walk their dog and then at the end of the day maybe put it on leash because at five o'clock they put it on leash and do it but from 6 to 9 a.m. okay we're talking about that portion as one person already said beach revenue more than exceeds beach expenses and I also am very offended that it was taken off the table before the public hearing, and then now it's back on the table again, possibly. I don't know. I, maybe I'm getting that all wrong or whatever. But um, because I think if a lot of people knew that it was being changed, that the meters were going to be started, I think we'd have a heck of a lot of people here talking about it because it's a policy. It's really a policy thing and not not so much a budget thing. Um, as far as the budget, you know, I think you did a good job working on it. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Any other public comments? My name is Jacqueline Perry. I live at 215 Black Point Road, and I am a member of the Board of Education and had no intention of speaking this evening. And I'm sorry Mr. Turk decided to sell his house and leave. I will be 80 in August. I am a living on a fixed income. I have had my home since 1970. It's not palatial. It's a four-room bungalow. It's on Black Point Road. I call it the low-rent district. But even though I'm on a fixed income, I've been able to pay my taxes. I don't know what I would do if I was not so fortunate. I noticed that my Social Security just went up my, excuse me, my social, I don't know how much that goes up, $2, but my Medicaid went up $30 this last month. But I believe in education. I believe this Board of Education and this council have really done the job necessary to provide for the students and for the community. And I know many, many people in my age bracket who support our schools. And I will continue to do so, and I thank you.
Can I ask a clarifying question about the, sure. the graph? Um, on the top right under net percent change, where it's 0.32% and 7.39%, what do those numbers, where do those, where does those come from? If you could, is that something quick and easy to explain or is that more involved? Yeah, I mean, I, it, it, all it really is is that on that chart, you see on, on the left-hand side, there's the operating revenues. Yeah. Then you have your operating, and then it has its percentage change. Then you have the operating expenses, the, the overall net change just is the difference between when you when you take the revenues less the ex, or the expenses less the revenues, how does that number compare to the prior year? So that really says, and what that reflects is that the town managed their expenditure line to about 2.2 percent, but they were able to do some things to raise additional revenues. Got so it. that's why the net increase for the town is is lower. I was just speaking to sort of the expenditure line, which yep. is you know payroll and all the other things that we try to control. And Thanks. similarly, and that's the same same answer for the school. Okay, thank you. Does that makes sense. Does it kind of not make sense? Does it? Uh, it makes more sense than it did before. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll I'll if, it's, that if like it's just me sitting here going, I don't get every little number here. I can always talk to you about it later. So thank that's you. fine. Thank you. It, I, I'm Sarah Mullen. I live at 55 Gunstock, and it was not clearer to me, so I'm going to ask a follow-up question to that follow-up question. Can you just say 7.39% of what? Like, put it in a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a spelling bee. <laughs> I don't mean that. It, it was just, it, it's just comparing what is, what is the net impact of, of the, the revenues for, the, in this case, you asked about the school. Mm -hmm. the net impact of the expense, expenses less the revenues that are coming in, what's that number, and what's that increase as compared to the prior year? So Scarborough has to bear 7.39% more of the cost than we did last year? No. It, okay. No, it doesn't, no, it doesn't, it just reflects that if, if we spent $100 last year, mm -hmm. we're spending $107 this year. Okay. That's, and, and what and the reason that, and again, it's sort of the reverse of what I said for the town. The reason that it's the expenditures are three percent, but the overall net impact. If you look at the revenue line, there was a huge loss of revenue for the schools, which is the state funding that was cut back, which they don't really have any control over. Mm -hmm. if that makes any sense? Yes, I get everything you say right up until seven point three nine percent, but I'm just going to leave it alone. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll catch you afterwards. Yeah, we that's fine. I um, the other thing I'd like to say is. Ha how awesome this comparator chart is. It's so useful to understand and see where we are compared to everybody, uh, all of our um, peer communities and some that maybe we can't even quite call peer communities. Um, I think it really helps put it in context and you know, without context we <coughs> can't really evaluate what we're looking at. So I just want to say how great that is and um, I certainly support the um, budget that's being proposed. I, I have to admit that that was, that was the town manager and his team that put that together. That's way beyond my skill set. So that, oh. <laughs> that was, that was. Well, credit where credit is due. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other public comments that can be made at the podium? Yeah. <coughs> any, other, any other public comments? Mr. Fredericks, do you, would you like to get up and speak? Okay. <laughs> to call you out. Um, any, uh, so no other public comments. We'll close the public uh, session, and um, I would like to um, entertain. Let me. Sorry, I've got to get organized here. Got to go back. Where is it? Oh, where is it? Oh, right here. And um, I'm going to ask for a motion from the council through the uh, council finance chair for the first motion. Yeah, the, the first motion that would be to accept the finance committee recommended adjustments. Motion one. No. We have to bring, we bring the motion. As, 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 uh, as written on order number 17 dash 0 on this first to move approval. Move approval. And, uh, uh, sorry. 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 Move approval. Move approval of. Move, move approval. So I'll make the motion. If we can move approval of the second reading on the proposed fiscal year 2018 municipal slash school budget. Is there a second? 
Second. And um, any questions or comments, or we can move right into the First Amendment. Actually, before we start, I did want to mention around the process for tonight and t try to keep some order and so people can understand because it can get a little bit lost. So what we've done is that we have actually um, uh, moved approval of the uh, first reading, which was without any adjustments as it was presented on April 1st. Um, what will happen next is that the Chair of the Finance Committee will make a recommendation on behalf of the Finance Committee as the first amendment. There will be a second amendment, um, which is, coincides with that first um, that is um, legally required, and it has to deal with the, the budget language. After that, there has been a presentment. Um, I asked this chair, which we've employed in the past, um, I asked this chair from the council members to present to the manager and to myself any amendments that they would like to see as part of this so that one, we can word it properly, and two, put it into an organized um, uh, system or format so that we can get through this very orderly. There have been three recommendations that have been forwarded. Um, there was a suggestion from a citizen that something was put on the table and taken off. Nothing has been put on the table until tonight. So um, any councilor who wishes to make an amendment, um, they've submitted those in advance and we will, what will happen is that um, we will divide the question and take up each one of those proposals um, in an orderly fashion. And so, um, the, so what should happen is that Peter has an amendment um, from the Finance Committee um, that we'll entertain first. Yeah, so I, I propose that we entertain motion one as the Finance Committee recommended adjustments which was on the information that was available on the chair as folks walked in. And is there a second? Second. So um, d do you need this written right into the record or can I just type it in? It would be good. Okay. So, um, Peter, if you can read the yep. top sentence as your motion. Yep. This is the item placed at your yep. Yep. place this evening. Move approval to accept the Finance Committee's recommend, recommended adjustments to the proposed 2018 budget in the amount of $1,800,322 for a new net budget of $63,031,112 and recommended adjustments to Chapter 311 schedule of fees. And is there a second? Second. second. Questions and comments regarding the adjustments? Sorry? Um, I thought we had to do the Second Amendment first. No, I think we can divide immediately. Yep. So any, um, re regarding um, any questions, so th um, what we can do is we can divide the question at this level. Um, and so what I would do is I'd move to divide the question to consider three items separately from the main motion. And the first item, and I'll read all three, but we will separate them into three conversations. The first is the proposed hourly parking fee at Higgins Beach. The second will be the extra beach cleaning at Pine Point Beach. And the third is the expanded hours for the adult services library, librarian. So that to um, is there a second to divide the question? Second. To take up the first item, and we will vote on each item separately. The first item is um, discussion and a recommendation on the proposed hourly parking fee at Higgins Beach. Um, and I believe the proposed language is to reduce the um, eight thousand dollars that was budgeted by the finance committee. It's a reduction of revenue, correct? Yes. The, uh, what you just moved in the, uh, in the finance chair's motion was to include eight thousand dollars in new revenue, if you will, uh, which results from a new parking fee at Higgins Beach on Bayview Avenue. That's what's in front of the council. Mr. Rowan. Is there an offset to that, or is this just to um, go to the, the bottom line of the budget? Um, based on what was recommended, um, it was, there was no offsetting request. I, I would say that the conversation surrounded uh, the, the cost of enforcement, and so I think there was some general recognition on my part that the, those two were related, that there's a way to capture some revenue in exchange for the level of effort and cost associated Councilor St. Clair. Can I just ask for a clarification? Yes. So that that item is asked is I want to make sure that I'm getting it right. Is nixing the fee for parking at the meters. Correct. So no time restrictions, just all together nixing. Correct. Okay. Just making I was just making sure. Thank you. That's excluded. Well, just to be clear, what's in the budget right now includes $8,000. So if you want to do something different, this is the time to change that. So by virtue of adopting the Finance Committee's recommendations, you have included $8,000 in that revenue. If you wish to do something else, 
Other than that, this is your opportunity to, to, to modify that, to remove it, to lower it. So, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry, Chair. Um, I thought that what he's reading is an amendment to the main motion, which is the budget as it stands, and that amendment is asking to take out the $8,000 for parking that was put into the budget, correct? Or am I, have my? It's essentially agnostic. What you've done is you've extracted that piece out and it's for conversation right now. Right now, if you do nothing, there'll be $8,000 in revenue uh, expected. From $1. So as put in front of you, it, it's not postured either way to remove it or to keep it in. It's pulling it out for you to deliberate. If you do nothing, it will stay in. Okay, so. Is, is there a motion to that effect? No, what, it's what, a discussion. No, Somebody needs to make a motion discussion. if they would like to withdraw that. Okay, so I would, so I do, I would like to okay. discuss it. Um, personally, I would like to see it, see us not um, charge for parking down there. Um, I'm willing to negotiate on that, obviously. Um, to a nine to five, so early morning is still free, so six to nine is free, and then after five is free would be ideal. Well, actually, ideal for me would be not, we're us not charging at all. I mean, originally, the intent of those machines were to make sure that we kept people at the one hour parking. I didn't feel like we were going to charge people. So for me, I would like to see no charge at all. So, so is that a motion to... So I'd like to make a motion to amend the main motion? To amend. To, amend. to strike. To, to amend and to strike out $8,000 as a revenue source relating to parking fees. Is there a second? I'll second oh, that. I, I don't think she's saying that. I think she's saying she wants to uh, change the hours. Right. So, Kate, are you? Wow, I'd wanted this to be as uncomplicated as possible. <laughs> it seems like I'm get, we're getting tangled. I apologize. It's no, no, my, no, it's, it's all mistake. of us. Um, it's a team. I, it was my mistake. I was under the assumption that it was something I, I yeah. perceived it wrong. So by dividing the question, the intent was to have a discussion, and if someone wanted to amend, they would make the amendment. So if I, in order to have that um, action, you have to have a motion. So I think it's relevant for Council of St. Clair to make was the motion. Some, was some, did someone in writing submit this yes. as a motion to amend? Who yes. submitted it? Um, the motion to amend yes. to strike the 8,000. Who submitted well, let, it? Let me rephrase that. Um, no one wrote the amendment in. However, councilors did share that they wanted this brought up. Right. I brought it up originally and withdrew it. Councilor Foley brought it up. Um, I don't recall who else might have brought it up. I don't think it's relevant as far as who <coughs> may have submitted it, more so around the conversation. Point of order. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's we're confused as to what's before us. So uh, that's why we have these in advance, so that we know what we're, what we're moving to amend. I think someone needs to posture the conversation by virtue of putting the uh, a motion on the table. Right. So Council of St. Clair did put a motion on the table in which it was seconded. The motion was to amend the, the Finance Committee's recommendation and to remove $8,000 in parking fees. Council Foley seconded it. So that's the question on the table. It's not, I'm not confused by that. No, I just didn't hear her say that. Councilor Chiazzo. So in regards to the motion that we're discussing at this point, removing $8,000 from the budget may seem like an arbitrarily small number in a $68 million budget. However, as a finance committee, um, municipal finance committee, we tax staff to meet our obligation of reducing our expenditures in conjunction with the school department an additional $65,000. So we tasked staff to go through and look at items that we felt were, or that, excuse me, that staff felt uh, may not be absolutely critical to the operation of the town, police, fire, rescue, things that if we do cut, there will be a noticeable impact to the entire town. Those were the things that we asked for. So on the surface, it may not seem like a lot of money, but we had, uh, had an obligation to, com to meet our, our $65,000 commitment in terms of operational reductions. There, this was a process that was vetted through finance. We had public debate. We had discussion. We had um, a little give and take back and forth um, using the staff's recommendations as the basis for that. And what's come out of that was a unanimous recommendation by the Finance Committee to accept what was put before you by Councillor Hayes. 
I think it's a, at this point, um, I'm a little leery of really looking at anything outside of that because this is such a complex process. Moving $8,000 here and there may not seem like a lot to an individual in a $68 million budget, and I will give you that. Percentage-wise, it's small, but we have to come up with that money somewhere, and we have to come up with it in a way that has as minimal impact on the town as possible. By doing it as a reactionary thing this late in the process tonight, I think is irresponsible. We've had time as a finance committee to vet those, those, those issues, discuss them, review them, and this was the unanimous recommendation. So I will oppose taking out $8,000 in revenue and parking fees because we have to replace it with something, and I'm not really aware of anything that we can replace that with that won't have some impact somewhere else in the budget that, quite frankly, would deserve a little bit more of an in-depth discussion than time may permit this evening. So I will not support this motion. Other comments? Councilor Donovan. Uh, I, I won't support this. Uh, parking fees at uh, the three Scarborough town beaches have existed for years. So we've been charging for beach parking. Uh, the Bayview parking was just another uh, form of beach parking that was added. It's the only purpose it serves. Uh, we have a report from uh, Chief Bolton uh, that uh, identified what the source of ticketing was out there last summer. We had 659 tickets issued, uh, of which over 400, almost 500 were paid. Uh, uh, and the number of tickets issued to Scarborough residents was 70 out of 659, slightly more than 10%. And I expect that the usage of parking uh, follows very closely the ticketing of uh, offending parkers. So what you have is about 90% of the parking that's taking place there is by people from out of town. Now, what do we want to do? Do we want to uh, have the cost of maintaining our beaches, and they, we, we manage our beaches and, we, and it costs us money. Do we want to have to have that borne by the taxpayers, or do we want to have it borne by the people who enjoy the service? In community services, we are striving for 100% uh, uh, pay as you go. And that's appropriate, because if you want the, to enjoy the recreational service, you should. So that's, that's my, my take on the, uh, uh, who would end up paying for this. It's also not an insubstantial amount of money. It's listed as $8,000. But in fact, there were almost 15,000 slips pulled out of the machine last year. So at a dollar a slip, that would be 15000 and we didn't do, we made a conscious decision working with Chief Moulton and his people, the people down at Higgins Beach, to educate the population, uh, uh, the community who was coming down. So we really didn't uh, do anything as far as people getting tickets during May and June. There was an education process. I fully expect this will be worth fifteen to $20,000. So it's not an insubstantial amount of money that we're talking about giving up. Uh, and Virtually every community in Maine and coastal America charges for parking. That you, you, York, Kennebunk, Kennebunkport, Old Orchard Beach, all of them charge for metered street parking. So you're dealing with a common custom, uh, and, uh, and you're, you have a choice here. You can either support our taxpayers and take the money from people from out of town, or you can put the burden on the taxpayers. That's how I see this. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor so Foley. Um, so what I know and what I've observed in town over the last several years, um, being involved in various beach issues, is that anytime we even have the word beach in a sentence uh, on anything, it, it can uh, be very contentious. And so, Part of this for me is again uh, a process issue. Um, I, I don't I don't recall exactly if it was posted on the I know the finance committee debated. I went to that meeting. Um, I don't know if it was posted specifically in advance that paid meters were going to be discussed uh, at that meeting. Um, I do know there are probably 50 people that would have come tonight. 
uh, had I not uh, made the mistake of telling them that we were, this was coming off uh, the table, because that's what I was told. Um, so I think it's a hot button <coughs> issue, and I think as a council, uh, we have a responsibility to be very careful with hot and sensitive issues. Um, I think it is a, an issue of access. When the, mar the meters first came to the council table, I believe the issue was they were looking and seeking to address um, not only the violations of people using that for more than the scenic vista view that it was supposed to be, uh, um, but also the noise and indecency issue. And so by limiting it to one hour uh, and having the meters, that you know we'd be taking that piece. I feel like we're going to a whole nother level by adding in the parking. Uh, and, and from what I heard the chief share at the finance committee, what I recall was that given the amount of uh, additional enforcement dollars, it, the, the amount of revenue was, would, was really around a wash. So I, I just don't, maybe moving those meters to a paid system is the way to go, but I don't think it should be done here as part of the budget process. I think it should be uh, something we discuss separately. Um, as I don't, I, I think this is one that could potentially come back uh, to bite us. So I will obviously support it because I seconded it, and I, I don't, I just don't think it's the way we should go. Council Rowan. So first, I don't think by seconding it, you're obligated, therefore, to vote for it. But um, uh, all right, fair enough. Um, I also went to the meeting. Uh, this wasn't presented in advance. This wasn't the staff recommendation. Uh, this was the finance committee that that debated the issue, um, determined that this was the, um, the right thing to do. I, I feel like there was a lot of hard work that went into this budget and that it was a, this was a difficult budget year and that there are a lot of problems with the budget, um, but we have the process. It went through the process. Um, it came out with the, um, with the revenue line. I think that, um, I think it's wholly appropriate to charge for parking there, um, but I, I think that ultimately, if we could find an $8,000 offset, I'd be willing to entertain um, replacing this with something else. Uh, but with, in the absence of the offset, I'm, I'm not willing to do that. Thank you. Um, so, need my notes, sorry. Um, I have a couple of things on this. Um, first is, I do want to make sure that people understand just as um, last year, as we talked about uh, implementing and installing the meters, there was a commitment at that time because we had to include, um, actually there was a discussion around parking fees and that we would take that issue up later. And the reason for that, um, why I know that is that because the parking fees category was added to the fee schedule last year with zero being inputted into it. So the council has deliberated it. It was a different council than we have here today, but we did deliberate at least briefly that we would talk about this going forward. So I don't think it's some hidden policy initiative um, it's the reality of uh, dealing with our budget. Um, second is um, I appreciate um, both the process that's been undertaken because it's taken us three years to get where we are, and it's really important that we adhere to those norms and those um, considerations that we had. To Councillor Donovan's comment regarding the source of revenue, um, absolutely correct. Um, we put in $8,000 because it was an offsetting adjustment um, regarding expenses. Um, um, that we uh, wanted to deal with when in fact it's probably going to be 15 to 20,000. And as it relates to other items um, that are going to be discussed, uh, particularly around Pine Point Beach Cleaning, um, that extra revenue to me is an opportunity for the manager, should he need to respond to a beach cleaning that is not budgeted, he has that revenue source coming in from the parking fees uh, because the manager does have the authority to um, increase expenses as long as there is offsetting revenue and then the council at the end of the year makes its annual adjustments for those expenses within certain guidelines that's prescribed. Obviously he has some um, boundaries that he has to abide by. So I see that the parking fees does accomplish um, a significant issue regarding his ability to be able to manage to the um, issues that might come up because you know, we could put $20,000 in the revenue stream for the parking fees and increase the expense on the budget, or we just simply trust the manager to react with his, uh, you know, his d discretion to be able to manage to the actual um, situation that arises. So 
I'm very much in favor of this. This is a logical next step for us because we talked about it with last year's budget, and I think it's an opportunity. And I do think it's important that as you look at this particular issue, you actually should take into consideration all of our beach fees and compare them to other communities that also have the same service. And we are significantly lower than our neighboring communities and how they deal with uh, managing their beaches and the income that's generated. So this is a nice small step into a bigger uh, situation. Um, what I want to commit to, just as uh, Councilor Donovan did when he was chair in the implementation of the meters, is that, um, and, and Tom did this, he came forward at, I believe, a meeting immediately after in which he presented a recommendation on the installation and how it would be managed. I would hope that the manager could come to us at our next meeting um, to address um, the comments that Council St. Clair made regarding, you know, when would the fee actually be applicable, you know, rather than at 5 a.m. and ending at 11 p.m., maybe it's 10 a.m. to whatever a nighttime reasonable, and that he would come forward with that plan and not necessarily delay this. Because um, we did that last year when we implemented the actual meters. So to me, that's a logical step if should this pass. Yes, Council St. Clair. I just want to make one really quick point. Um, I'm not on the finance committee. Yeah. There are numerous members on this council that aren't on the finance committee. So this is the first time that we've sat in public with a finished budget. So I don't think it's inappropriate, and I don't think a counselor should be made to feel that it's inappropriate to ask questions or to make adjustments to this budget. That doesn't mean that I'm disrespecting the Finance Committee or anybody else sitting up on this panel. That means I'm taking a good hard look at this budget and trying to figure out what's best for this town. We asked the school board to nickel and dime themselves. I think we should also be held accountable at that same level. So that's all I'm trying to do. I hope no one's in disagreement with that. I, well. Any other comments? I guess. Well, his, which is a, is a point of clarity for a couple things. One, it, it, to Council Rowland, we, we did talk about one of, one of the accounts that we did use as offset is a paving account. Mm -hmm. So that's that was sort of our balancer at the end of the day. So just to answer your specific question, that is a go-to pool of money that we could use to replace that. So that, that just answers your question that you asked. Because we did that. We couldn't find all the money we were looking for. And so we did use the paving account. I think we used, what, Tom, $6,000 from the paving account or something? Yeah. It was a modest amount. Two, um, you know, and I think, and I, I think some things were heard tonight about it maybe being a policy issue. I, I you know, I think what Councillor Baybine may have suggested, saying we have a placeholder for $8,000. So if we find a way that we can collect $8,000 in revenue from the meters, then that's that's met the obligation. Anything after that is upside. So if there is some plan that we can come back and address, how do we balance the needs of the community? And I think it, and so I think that might be a great way to kind of compromise going forward. So, so those are just two things that I offer. Councilor Rowan. So, then am I to understand that we'd be taking the eight thousand dollars out of the paving yep. budget if we if we were to pass? Well, it? I mean, that it's 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 one of the tools that we use to kind of get to where we're going. So it just answers your specific yeah. question about if there was a place to go for money, where would it be? Point 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 of clarification: there is no amendment or motion on the table to adjust the revenue from any source. What's on the table right now is to remove $8,000 in revenue from the existing budget by removing the parking fees. There has been no other motion to take that revenue from someplace else. Right. And you would have to take that, if, the, if you did go that, you would have to take that up after? After these are done. And as a, as a point of order, is that, would that be something that we could do given that it wasn't pre-submitted in writing? Um, Every, so this is obviously this has also been, um, you know, as chair. Um, first, I want to uh, extend thank you to everyone who did um, submit in advance because it does help. Any councilor can make any recommendation that they would like here without having previously submitted it. You have you have the right to do that. Okay. Yes, council. Okay. Forward. So it could make a motion. Same motion with the offsetting of taking the eight thousand dollars out of the. So the motion on the so the motion on the floor is to reduce the our, um, the parking fee revenue from Higgins Beach that is in the budget. You would need to um, turn that down. Okay, and then create a new motion. And create no excuse me or you would have to motion. yeah create, uh, turn it down, um, meaning that it stays in, and then you would have to do a new motion that combines this with the paving 
or some other revenue, whatever you wish. So that would have to be a separate motion than what's on the floor because you can't amend this because it's already an amendment. <coughs> Does that make sense? Any other comments or questions regarding Higgins Beach parking fees? So just for the public, what we're talking about is reducing, um, um, decreasing the amount of revenues um, that are assigned to parking fees at Higgins Beach by $8,000. And the motion on the floor is to remove that. So, if there are no more questions regarding this, there is one more question. Yes. Sorry, and I, you know, it's just a process issue. So, can I amend that motion or no? No. Okay. So we have to vote on that issue, and then we can yes. move forward. Right. Any other questions or comments? Not seeing any. Um, this is not a roll call. This is an amendment. So, all in favor of the motion to reduce revenues associated with parking fees at Higgins Beach by $8,000. Please raise your hand. Aye. That is two. Those opposed? And that is five. The next motion um, is, or the next discussion is the extra beach cleaning at Pine Point Beach. I believe that that was eliminated at a cost of $6,000 yes. even. Yes. Is there a desire or does someone wish to make a motion to increase expenses related to beach cleaning by six thousand dollars council foley i will make a motion to reinstate that and offset it with the paving account money second discussion council rowan i'm just trying to find the paving is that would that be capital improvement where's the paving it's in our packet well <clears throat> in the budget, it's in the operation, the uh, public works operation. It's in the operational budget. Do you happen to know what what that is? I thought it's I about two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Two two thirty. Uh, I can be more exact if you give me a moment. You can proceed, and I'll fill you in as I find it. Can we move on, Councilor? Please, uh, please. Councilor Thank Donovan. You. Um, I remember this problem last year, and I, th I think it's a serious problem. Uh, I think it's a legitimate problem. I agree with Councillor Cazo that uh, pulling little threads out of the budget at this point is inappropriate. Uh, the, the whole idea is that the Finance Committee goes over this, uh, uh, and it pains me to think that uh, Pine Point would not have the money to do uh, the uh, weekly clean. Uh, I would uh, suggest to you that the upwards of 20,000, and I would uh, submit this if this motion were defeated, I would move to uh, repeat it by offsetting with an increase in the Higgins Beach parking revenues uh, uh, so as to cover the extra cost uh, because we know the Higgins Beach parking revenues are going to cover this cost uh, uh, and more and, and more. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I do support this in principle. Uh, I'm uh, uh, I think taking it out of the uh, paving budget is wholly inappropriate. So uh, just a point of clarification. The motion on the floor is to increase beach cleaning at Pine Point by $6,000 and to offset that by a decrease in the paving account. So if the counselor wishes to, uh, for us to consider his second part of the change to that recommendation, then you would need to um, reject this and have an additional motion that offsets it by the other account rather than by what counselor fully recommended. Just to answer Council Rowan's point, uh, the current balance is $264,850. Not balance, but the current budget amount. And sorry if I could follow. Yes. Second question. And so I, I noticed that part of the offset was we were reducing by 32000 That's inclusive of the $32,000. Yes. Okay. And you said it was 200 and what? 265? 264850. Thank you. And just to add, by the way, procedurally, um, the other alternative is that um, the person who uh, made the motion could also withdraw it. Point, point of clarification, if a motion has been made to remove something with an offsetting revenue and rejected, 
can you bring that point up again with a different yes. revenue, or is that yes. double? That you can do that. Okay. Thank you. And the reason is that you've materially changed it by the offsetting revenue account. Just so want to my wins and Council Foley. Um, well, I just uh, as part of discussion, uh, one of the reasons I'm making this motion is again, um, I was under the uh, understanding that this was already something that was going to be brought back, um, and I and understand that amendment was withdrawn. So I apologize if it may made for some confusion this evening. Um, but that was another one of those uh, pieces of communication. I don't, however, uh, think it's inappropriate for us to be making uh, comments, judgments, uh, amendments. I mean, I think that's what tonight is for. Uh, and I take exception to the fact that uh, we're being uh, kind of pushed into uh, feeling as if we're not allowed to have a discussion because I have big concerns with our process. The very first time I saw this budget was the first reading. That was my opportunity. I had no opportunity to provide any kind of meaningful feedback if I just saw the budget that night. I've attended every single meeting. I've made phone calls. Um, this tonight is what this is supposed to be for. And, you know, the amount of money that we're talking about, um, and the kind of intense pressure, uh, I, again, I, I think it speaks to culture. And it's very frustrating for me to sit here and feel like I can't even offer an opinion or an amendment uh, without being attacked. And that's how I feel. Uh, and I'm just being honest about that. Um, it's not a culture that I think our town supports or wants. In fact, at the chamber meeting last night, they said the number one thing people look for in a community is culture. Um, number two is strong schools. Number three is great resources. We have strong schools and we have amazing resources, but our culture needs some work, in my opinion. So I'll be happy to withdraw if I did this the wrong way, um, but I, I think we should just vote on it. <laughs> That's what I think we should do. So um, just as chair, a couple of things. One is um, I think we all need to be mindful that words uh, carry emotion and that we uh, need to respect each other. And I think that thus far, um, we also have to respect that each of us have an opinion that can be shared. Um, and number two, um, there, there's this notion that somehow you submitted this, you did not bring this motion forward incorrectly. So I, I don't think that you, you should withdraw this if you disagree with um, the use of either the decrease of um, the expense, or excuse me, uh, the increase in the expense or the offsetting piece. So there's, there's been no error in how it has been presented uh, whether it uh, was presented tonight in advance or even as you stated it. So um, I, I'm not sure where anyone is being confused about the process. It's, we have not strayed from what we've done in the past. It's whether or not you agree or disagree, and I think we need to be mindful of how we express that. That's all. How's Chiazzo? So back to the point at hand, um, the motion on the table is to, um, re to remove additional money, pay for the offset with um, paving revenue, or, or funds to utilize for paving um, projects. So as a member of the Transportation Committee, uh, I did uh, consider this uh, would have been a very easy and um, non-difficult um, decision to simply say, let's just make up all the revenue in the paving account. But the point of not making snap and rash decisions uh, with one night's notice is that you have to have informed decision making. And one of the processes that we do in uh, the budget is that we have a finance committee that, that goes through and deliberates that and does those things. Um, from a, so in the, in the spirit of uh, informed decision making, part of the paving account would go to things like um, our road improvements. And what I have here, and I'd be happy to have copies shared with the council, is the PACS, which is the Portland Area Comprehensive Transit. Tom, please help me with that, with the PACS transportation system. Thank you. Thank you. Um, roadways, and it's an evaluation of the roads in Scarborough. Um, there's a substantial number of roads here that um, do, does not meet standards or uh, need to be completely reconstructed in order to get to uh, a level that could even qualify for funding joint PACS money. So it's not as easy as it may appear on the surface of saying, look, it's only $6,000 here, $8,000 there. Anything that we delay on the road treatments is going to cost us 
significantly more down the road. The longer it's, it, that's, a, that's a fact. The more you delay road maintenance, the more expensive it gets. So it's not, and I wish things were as simple as just saying, you know, it's only $8,000 and we have a large sum of money in the paving account. We have a large sum of money in the paving account for a reason. That, that money has to be working towards fixing the roads. So uh, I just want the council to be mindful that a, a quick and easy decision to avoid a potentially difficult situation or a difficult question that some in town may not agree with uh, does have consequences in other areas that we do need to be mindful of. Um, I, the beach cleaning was not intended to punish people. This isn't singling out one group over another. These are, long, these are hard decisions that we have to make, but we do have to make them. We can't avoid them or kick the can down the road. Um, I, I think we, the process was, was I, I thought, uh, more than reasonable by, with staff involvement. This was, this was one of the considerations that came before the, uh, one of the staff recommendations that came before finance. And the option was to remove them entirely, the second cleanings entirely. So we tried to come up with a compromise and find a way that we could mitigate as much of that impact as possible. So by offsetting half of that and using the, the additional revenue in parking, we tried to strike a balance between completely eliminating a service and augmenting that, that something that's not necessarily critical to the operation of town, but allows us to, to meet most of those needs, but we have to come up with this money somewhere. So I think just arbitrarily taking it from the paving account, if we're going to do that, we have to be aware of the consequences of that. And I think long-term, financially-wise, I don't think that's necessarily a prudent move. Councilor Rowan. So I finally found it. The, the line item for paving in the, in the first reading budget was, was already reduced from last year's spend by $42,000, which was 12.5%. We then took another $30,000 from it um, for... Um, to, to meet our 85 obligation, which takes us to 20-ish percent. Um, so I guess I'd be concerned if we went lower. Um, that's fine. Comment. I do. I have a comment. Yeah, I, I actually share your concern, Councilor Chiazzo, um, around just dipping into a, a fund that's existing and what that could lead to, especially in terms of public perception. Um, that was suggested to me. Um, as a potential place to go uh, by the town manager. So that's why I chose to go that avenue. Um, but I'm going to strike my last motion uh, this evening because it's the same thing. Um, because again, that was the suggestion was that that was a fund that doesn't have a large audience and that we could easily uh, use. So just putting it out there. So just if I can ask before I go to you, Mr. when you said you're going to uh, strike your last motion, are you removing the motion that you made for the extra beach cleaning and offsetting it by paving? No, I'm not. So you're talking oh, about okay. number three, which hasn't been brought up yet, right? No, 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 I'm talking about the library position. Okay, number three. Okay, all right. I just want to make sure. Uh, Council Oh, uh, I agree that taking it out of the paving is inappropriate, but we know the Bayview parking is going to generate two or three times what's in the budget. So uh, if this motion yeah. fails, I will uh, make a motion to amend to pay for the $6,000 in fine point beach cleaning uh, offset by an increase in the uh, Bayview parking, increasing it from 8000 to $14,000. So the mo current motion is to increase the expense line for beach cleaning at Pine Point and to offset that by a decrease in, re uh, decrease in paving uh, revenue. Correct? Yeah. Sorry. Um, so with that, any other comments? Not seeing any. All those in favor of the motion as amended, please raise your hand. One, two, three. All opposed? That's four. Thank you. Um, the next item for discussion, and if you choose not to um, uh, bring this forward, um, then we'll just move on to any other amendments that have not been presented. But the next item in the division question is the amended, um, sorry, is item number three, the expanded hours for the adult services librarian. To bring some context around that, the library was asking for, I believe, a 0.3 increase in a part-time staff um, that accounted for approximately $9,500. Um, the uh, finance committee um, 
actually, no, excuse me, the town manager presented the budget with that item being removed from the request. Is there a desire by the council to bring this forward as a motion to reinstate that? Not seeing any, not to be quick, but uh, not seeing any, I'm gonna move on. So um, as it has been divided, um, before we take any other amendments, because we have to take them outside of the division question, just so you know, um, is um, we're now back to the main motion as amended, which is the recommendation, because none of them passed, is the recommendation of the Finance Committee with the adjustments that were read by Councillor Hayes. Are there any other questions regarding those, those, that amendment? Just a clarification. Yeah. The, so on the beach parking, though, there's going to, that's going to come back to us in terms of the implementation and actual, uh, you know, whether it's 9 to 5 or the, the hours, all of that will come back to us at a later time. I, I will um, commit to making sure that the manager is reminded to come back to us with a presentation about what he would recommend on the implementation, just as he did last year under our process for the installation of the meters, if you're okay with it. Thank you. Choice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being okay with that. Um, any okay, super excited. It didn't fail. Um, any other questions regarding the main motion as amended? Not seeing any. All in favor of the main motion as amended by the Finance Committee, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. seven. Unanimous. Thank you. Now, if there are any other amendments that the Council would like to uh, present, that have not been presented, this is the time to present them and we'll take them on one at a time. Council Donovan. Uh, I would move uh, to amend the budget to increase the Pine Point cleaning expense line item account by $6,000 uh, and offset that by an increase in the Bayview meter parking revenue by $6,000. So it would go from eight to 14. Second. Questions or comments regarding the amendment? Yes, Council Chiazzo. So I, I, I appreciate Councilor Donovan's uh, desire to try and strike that balance and get that back in. Um, I, I, on principle, I, I kind of have to hold my ground here and say that it was, you know, um, a difficult decision, and uh, albeit probably not a popular one with Pine Point, um, and, and hopefully to, to uh, Chairman Baybine's point, should we have see that additional revenue come in? Perhaps uh, the manager does have discretion to use that as needed. I just hate to, to not knowing what that is and not a firm understanding, and it, it's kind of like excise tax. We're assuming it's going to be a certain level. Um, I'm just not comfortable assuming that it's going to be that way uh, and, and, and solidifying that. I just assume if it comes in and we know what that number is and it, and it allows us to do that, then that's, that's fine, but I, I, I really can't support increasing that line right now because I just don't know what kind of revenue we would be generating from the parking exactly. Councilor Rowan. So my recollection of the, where we got that $8,000 number was fairly haphazard, somewhat <laughs> arbitrary. Um, <laughs> um, Sounds familiar. Yeah, that's how we roll. But uh, uh, so I, I, I'm comfortable with saying that an 8,000, excuse me, a $14,000 arbitrary number, given that it's in line with the number of tickets that were, that were issued last year, plus we had the two month hiatus, um, I'm fairly comfortable with putting that uh, forward. So I'll, I'll support the <coughs> Other comments or questions? I'll just add, um, I'm a, a mix. I really don't know how I'm going to vote. And the only reason why is one, I trust the manager's um, decision making and his staff in, in reacting to a need um, regarding the beach cleaning. Two, um, not knowing what it really is going to generate um, because that excess you know, can be used towards that. And then three is that we haven't heard what the proposal is on how to implement it. So what if, it, what if the, um, right now that means that the implementation would be basically $1 an hour for almost every hour in which those meters should be running according to ordinance. So there seems to me that we might be restricting some flexibility to roll this out in a more thoughtful process that's not quite as restrictive or as stringent. So I'm a little bit nervous about taking that big jump because then it gives very little flexibility to the manager to implement a plan. So I think I just talked myself into not voting in favor of it. <laughs> Council Dunham. Uh, I, I completely hear your argument and Councilor Gaze's argument. Uh, I, I, however, 
have felt strongly from the moment the condition was described as one that required us to take action. I missed the meeting at which it was discussed, so my apologies for that. And I have very mixed feelings, as you do, as Councilor Kayser does, but I will vote for it. Okay. Any other comments? Councilor Foley? I guess I just I feel very stuck between a rock and a hard place. I absolutely want to reinstate the cleaning. I think it's absolutely necessary and needed down there. Um, at the same time, I guess for me, I'm struggling with um, you know a six thousand dollar number. Uh, we have the money. Uh, we don't know that we're going to have it. We we have the money in one place in the paving account. We don't know for sure that we will get the revenue. We maybe we will, maybe we won't. Um, but I'm being opposed to the parking in general. It feels like we're pitting one community against another. So I have to vote in order to support one community. I have to vote against another community, and that doesn't feel good. So um, I'm not going to support this. I'll, I'll support the, the recommendation, the tough decision and recommendation that the Finance Committee put forth in the first place. Other comments or questions? If it all helps the council, I'll certainly take this into consideration as part of my recommendation. It may have produced some limitations uh, in that regard, but um, I'll certainly take into consideration and provide you some information on it. Not seeing any other questions, <coughs> uh, the motion on the floor is to increase the expense related to um, Pine Point Beach cleaning by $6,000 and to offset um, by an increase in revenue related to parking fees is the motion. All in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. One, two, all opposed, five. Um, any other amendments from council? Any other amendments? Um, with no other amendments, we're back to the uh, main motion as amended. Um, Is this what, oh, this, oh, there needs to be a second motion. Sorry, there's a legal motion. Um, so the, the next motion, I'll, I'll just simply motion, and if I could receive a second, this is a motion to move approval to amend the main motion as amended to include at the end of the budget motion as follows. Be it further ordered that in the event that the Scarborough School Department receives more state education subsidy than the amount included in its budget, that it be divided equally between property tax relief in fiscal year 2018 and the school department's fund balance for future use to offset property taxes. Second. <clears throat> Any comments or questions regarding that motion? Not seeing any. Um, I move, a pr um, I'm sorry, um, I need to take a vote, sorry. I haven't had coffee. I need to take a vote. All in favor of the amendment, and that is unanimous. Now we're back to the main motion as amended to approve the fiscal year 2018 budget. Any closing comments from Council? Council Donovan. It's been said before, but it should be said again. Both finance committees did an excellent job. Uh, I expect next year, as Councilor Hayes said, it will be a difficult year, but we have uh, a very substantial fund balance monies. Uh, we have a town that's growing uh, so that the assessments are there. There's a reasonable expectation of uh, additional monies, uh, particularly on the municipal side, at least as the legislature seems to be indicating uh, some sanity uh, return to uh, the manner in which uh, uh, municipalities have been funded. Uh, and we're at minimum receiver, so we can't go down there. So all in all, I think we can manage our budgets going forward. And I take that into account seriously when uh, supporting this budget, which I think is an excellent budget. Council Chiazzo. So I, I, uh, I just want to make a clarifying statement. I, I hope nobody gets bogged down in the details and one gets hung up on one particular issue on this budget. Uh, to me, the bottom line is that you know we're delivering a budget that uh, has a tax increase, a uh, projected tax increase of 3.49%. Um, and uh, I think that's the, that's the important thing that we all need to kind of get behind now and, and, mm -hmm. and move that forward. Um, I think I said it in the beginning of the process, I'll say it again, I think this is a budget that uh, I'm sure nobody likes, but hopefully we can all live with. Um, it's, it's not meant to punish any one particular group. It, we, we really looked at this from a collective standpoint. The one town, one budget philosophy is there, uh, and I think we proved that with this budget. So um, I, I know it can feel like a very difficult, contentious discussion, and it should, 
um, but I, I think we, you know, any decision we make is going to have consequences, and I, I think these, this one will, um, in the end, prove to be fiscally responsible for our town, for sure. Councilor Rowan, I think I saw your hand I up. I did, um, and I have, a com I have a point of order and then, then a comment. In our packet, we have a third motion, which is related to Chapter 311 on the, the schedule of fees and such. Is that something we have to add on? There's that was part later. of the uh, Finance Committee. Okay. So it was... Included. Consolidated. Yeah. It was consolidated. I see. Okay, great. Good. Thank, Thank you. For um, and then, um, just making sure, looking out oh. for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Good man. So, the, um, I think I want to uh, just state again that the state has not made a final decision in terms of the, the funding for education. So there's still time to call your legislatures and uh, uh, our, our senators. Um, I, I think that uh, there's a, certainly a lot of momentum toward uh, a budget that will have a larger um, subsidy. I don't know what that number is going to be. Um, I don't know what, you know, certainly no one can tell, but we won't know until after we vote. Um, so there's that. Um, I'd also really appreciate the, the effort that staff has put in and the schools put in, um, the committees have put in, because this was a really tough budget processes, per usual, I guess, but it's only my second <laughs> time through. Um, and uh, I think that, that we re there really were some hard decisions here, as you can see tonight by the, the long faces. Um, the, um, um, yeah, I mean, I think it, the fact that nobody likes it probably means that it's a decent compromise, so. That's what it is. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll build on some of the comments that have been made and, you know, in, in, in putting the numbers aside, what, you know, I've, this is my third year in sort of this process and what was the most rewarding is it feels like a different culture between the Board of Education, the Town Council and really trying to work together. And tonight was a really good example. We have, we have kind of, we've kind of gone after the easy things to try to balance the budget. Next year is probably going to be a tough year and you're starting to see what we're really going to run into is everybody has their services that they want. We're going to have to start making some real tough choices as a community about what services do we all want to pay for. And I think tonight was just a precursor. Everything we do from this, the low hanging fruit, if you will, is kind of gone. The next things that we start talking about are going to impact people differently in the community. We need, and I, I'm happy that we have a process, I think, that helps us start to deal with that going forward. I just really caution, this is just a great foundation for discussions next year. We're going to have more of these conversations about what do we do, what don't we do, how do we create value. So I just thank everybody who's at the table, and not that I look forward to the conversations next year, but the, I think we had a great start. So thanks, everybody that participated. Other Council Foley. Um, so I think just in terms of overall general thoughts around the budget, I feel almost eerily similar to how I felt last year. Um, I think we got to a, a very good place. Um, I am concerned, and not getting bogged down in the details, details, but the details do matter in terms of how it impacts future bu budgets. So I am concerned about that, and the best analogy I could come up with was weight loss. So if someone wants to lose 20 pounds, there's multiple ways to lose 20 pounds. You can starve yourself for a couple of weeks, uh, exercise like a crazy fool, um, or you can, you know, kind of do it incrementally. <coughs> and so uh, how we get to the final numbers does matter, and, and I'm not con convinced that we haven't set ourselves up um, for a tough time next year, but we're, I guess we'll deal with that next year. Uh, the one thing I do want to say is that um, our new superintendent, uh, took what I believe and consider to be probably the bravest and boldest steps that I've seen any uh, school leader take in our community in a very long time. Um, and so she's earned my full respect and support. Um, I do think there are some improvements to the process. Um, getting better is something you never stop doing. So don't take that as I don't think process or progress has been made. I, I believe progress has been made, but I think it's something we can continue to pr improve upon. Um, and we can talk about that when we talk about goal setting. So uh, I'm going to support the budget with uh, hopes that the state comes back with a little bit more money and we can actually come under 3% and that'll be fantastic. Just a couple of closing comments for myself first. I, I really want to 
um, say thank you to uh, Councilor Hayes and to School Board Member Jody Shea. Uh, for running this year's process right, thank you. Uh, and joint committees. It was um, an evolution to get where we are today after three years of really developing the relationship and understanding what our challenges uh, are um, and uh, recognizing what our future challenges are as well early enough um, this year so that we can, in essence, already start the process for next year. So um, thank you to both committees as well. Um, I do think um, this budget um, is a um, good representation of our community as a whole in which we continue to invest. I um, um, also want to send uh, thank yous to the superintendent. Very, very impressed uh, with the direction um, of the relationship as well as with the manager and his continued work and his staff and all the leadership councils and everybody. It's tough uh, making choices for this town. Um, I've served, this is my 10th budget that I've been able to sit on and to approve um, and none of them are easy. And um, we're never going to make 100% of our community happy. I've served with some of the most conservative people um, previously, um, not necessarily on this, in which um, they wanted 0% tax increase, but yet um, anything the fire department wanted, they got. Um, or anything the school department got, they wanted, even though they might have been conservative. So everyone has their kind of um, interest. Um, that they focus in on and it's really tough for a council and, and a school board to balance those interests and come up with a budget that really, truly can be supported by the community and I think that we have that. Um, you know, the um, elephant in the room, gorilla in the room, whatever the reference that you want to choose, but it's undeniable, the problem is not local. The problem is at the state level. The state of Maine has told the state, uh, sorry, the citizens of the state of Maine have told the state legislature we want funding at 55% for education. We've told them twice. They don't do it. I think that's absolutely, you want to talk about a deplorable democracy, um, that is the level in which you should focus in on because if we received even flat funding to last year, the actual tax rate increase would be less than two. It's like 1.2%. So even if we just got flat funding from last year, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's about the amount of money that the state level is holding back in its reserves, which is about $1.5 billion and not sending to education and back to the communities. And it's at all levels, and they're attacking us even from other areas in which they're contemplating taking away excise tax that we use for transportation and paving needs. Even though they own Route 1, we're the ones that have to um, actually manage it, fix it up, uh, you know, um, do all the things that we need to do locally, even though it's not our road, it's the state's. So no matter where you look, the real problem in this state is at the state level and the state legislature. So I encourage you to contact your legislators as well because they're not getting the message. And the irony of the history of the state of Maine is that if you actually go back and look at um, um, state funding, um, when they introduced income taxes in the, I think it was the 50s, it was about property tax relief at the local level and pushing the money downward. Um, that didn't happen. They then instituted sales tax and the purpose is to send it back down to the communities to um, release, uh, relieve property tax. That's not happening. Main revenue sharing is going down 55%. Um, even when they, if I remember correctly, even when they instituted the lottery, it was about using the money for the lottery for education. That's not coming down. So, um, you know, when you're talking about um, poor budgeting, I think you're better suited to actually be criticizing the state rather than the, your local community who has to react to all of that. Um, and regarding the challenges that we've had, um, I think that every change that we make um, is extremely emotional, increasing taxes for some. I, I respect the fact that we have seniors who are on fixed incomes and it's very, very difficult. And while one citizen brought that up, um, the one thing, and I can say this personally, is that, but yet when you go to sell your house from, this, from the town or uh, within this town, the value of your house is significantly growing as a result of the investments that we're making personally. Um, last time I said this, by the way, um, my, my, own per my own personal property tax went up, but I'm going to say it again. We just had an evaluation of my house. My house is, I've had it for 19 years and it's <coughs> doubled in value because of those investments. So I think that we have a very strong community. I'm very happy about the budget that we're at. It's not always easy, um, but we've made some tough decisions. And I know that in the end of the day, even though we didn't approve the beach cleaning piece, I know that when the manager has a, a catastrophe and there's a major storm and that seaweed comes on, he's going to get his staff out there because they're very professional and they're going to clean it and they will find the revenues within the budget. Um, and I, I know he does it. So I'm very confident in the management of our community um, through his leadership as well. So I'm very much in favor of this budget and I want to thank everyone and thank the community for giving us the support for this because that's the next step.
Any other questions, comments? Not seeing any on the um, uh, motion um, as amended, the main motion as amended. Um, it is a roll call vote. So if I can turn that over to the clerk. Councilor Donovan? Yes. Councilor Rowan? Yes. Councilor Foley? Yes. Councilor St. Clair? Yes. Councilor Hayes? Yes. Councilor Chiazzo? Yes. Chairman Bayvine? Yes. Thank you. Um, I know some people are here only for the budget. Would you like to, <laughs> is it the will of the council to recess for a few minutes so that people yeah. can exit? Yeah, so, move. so we'll recess for, if we can be back here in about four minutes, that would be wonderful. Thank you everybody for coming.
minutes. That's for uh, special events. Uh, uh, it's like the Beach, uh, Beach Ridge Speedway would put on a professional uh, program, and it requires a state fire marshal's permit, a fire department permit, uh, with substantial regulatory oversight. Uh, the changes are largely intended to recognize the existence of consumer fireworks, which uh, did not exist by state law when Chapter 608, the Display Fireworks Ordinance, was created. Uh, this is applicable to only a handful of fireworks displays that, uh, for which permits are issued each year, uh, but it does bring the uh, Chapter 608 uh, into conformance with Chapter 608A, the display, the uh, consumer fireworks chapter. Any questions or comments from the council? Not seeing any. Um, I just want to just mention, um, so I, I want to um, sit with you, Bill, if you don't mind, so I can go through this because I know that there are a lot of citizens that are opposed to changing or any regulations regarding fireworks. So I'd like to uh, maybe before the second reading just have a sit down so I can hear the rationale behind that um, and then contribute in a public setting around those opinions. But I'll reserve that for the second reading. Council Rowan? I, I apologize. I'm, I was scrolling when, when you asked for comment. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to um, expand on that. We talked about this in uh, ordinance committee. Um, the, the change to this particular ordinance is not the consumer fireworks. This is just the display. Um, so it, it, it doesn't, materially it doesn't really impact um, uh, much. The only thing that we did was we, uh, as, as Bill mentioned, uh, was we included consumer grade uh, as being allowed to be shut off and then there's also a permit that the state is no longer issuing that we removed the requirement for. So it was really just kind of a, um, while we were fixing things. It was really a clean up. Clean up. Okay. So, um, I'll reserve that comment for the next item since that deals with it. Any other comments or questions? Not seeing any. All in favor? Thank you. The next item is order number 17-050. It is the first reading schedule of public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendments to Chapter 608A, Town of Scarborough Consumer Fireworks Ordinance Section 4, Use of Consumer Fireworks Restricted, Firework Restricted Section 5, uh, violation and enforcement and section 7 notice is there anybody from the public who would like to speak not seeing any I'll close public comment is there a motion from the council so moved second any uh, comments from Councilor Donovan's chair yes uh, I'll summarize the key changes for uh, uh, counselors and for uh, people in the audience uh, we received a fair amount of feedback that there were uh, issues that should cause us to restrain, not eliminate, the allowance of fireworks. Uh, and so we made a good faith effort at doing that and it contained the following proposed changes. Uh, we're proposing that we uh, restrict the number of days from five to four days, eliminating July the 5th. So uh, July 3rd, 4th, December 31st, and January 1st would remain uh, in effect. No change there. Uh, the times were changed from 12.30 a.m. where it stated that time to 10 p.m. everywhere, every, every day. Uh, the fire department uh, notification uh, aspect is an important part of this. Uh, the use of consumer fireworks will now require a notice form, a notification form to be filed with the fire department. Uh, uh, the ordinance change also requires uh, Scarborough retailers to advise buyers of the notification requirement. Uh, we had thought about it and it received a favorable review in the workshop on a permit process. Uh, after hearing uh, testimony from the fire department, uh, they convinced us that a notification process was essentially identical, but reduced our uh, potential liability. Uh, 
uh, and we accepted that. That was appropriate. Uh, the notification form requires users to confirm compliance with a series of conditions, uh, and I'll read them so, since most people are probably not aware of these. Uh, 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 these conditions are, if the location is other than property owned uh, by the owner, uh, I have uh, by, by the uh, applicant. I have permission of the owner of the property to let up the fireworks. I have liability insurance for any bodily injury or property damage that may result from fireworks use. I have read the Respect Your Neighbors, gu uh, neighbors Guidelines of the Town of Scarborough, which hatched here too, and agree to follow its terms. The Town of Scarborough Respect Your Neighbors Consumer Fireworks Guidelines states Use of fireworks, uh, use fireworks strictly in accordance with the submitted notification. Do not use fireworks after 10 p.m. on the days allowed. Do not use fireworks in any way that could unreasonably disturb your neighbor's comfort and repose or infringe upon your neighbor's safety or peaceful enjoyment of their property. Inform your neighbors in advance where and when you are planning to use fireworks. Do not use fireworks near animals or livestock that may become frightened. Only set off fireworks in areas where no fireworks debris will fall on your neighbor's property or in environmentally sensitive areas such as beaches, marshes, or wetlands. Do not permit anyone under the age of 21 to use fireworks. Carefully follow the safety instructions provided by the seller of the fireworks. Uh, we also amended the enforcement provision. Uh, the property owner uh, uh, can be found liable for illegal fireworks use on their property as well as the individual violator. And that summarizes the major changes. Thank you. Congressman Councilor Chiazzo. So, um, uh, sorry, making a couple notes real quick. I, I certainly can support this for first reading. Um, I'd like some clarification between now and second reading if possible. Um, first question I have is how does one dispose of unused fireworks? So if you buy something on July 2nd, it's pouring the 3rd and 4th, you can't light them off, uh, or there's a burn hazard or something and now you've got significant amount of explosives in your garage, how do you legally dispose of them? It's the first question I have. I don't want to answer tonight, no. I just, I'd like this if the clarification for the next one. Um, second one is what criteria is used for rejecting a fireworks permit from the fire department? And the third one is, I'd like to see a clearer definition on what, the, what unreasonably disturbing means, because what is reasonable to me <coughs> may not be reasonable to my neighbor. So I'd like to have a little bit more clear definition on that if possible. Thank you. Councilor Hayes. Yeah, and I guess, you know, kind of tag team, um, support for first read, but also I'd like some, some concerns around, you know, you, you suggested that the property owner could be held liable for anybody on their property setting off fireworks. So it's both the individual and property owner. And that could be, you know, there could be someone that's on your property that you don't. So anyway, I, I had a question about that. Um, sh share the same concern, the really broad language about disruptive to neighbors, also the language around any dogs or animals. I know when people light off fireworks, I can hear them three or four miles away and my dogs react to them. But that creates a very broad sort of net. So, and then the, the fourth question I just have from an administrative point of view as, as we look at administration, does the notification process on the fire department impose any type of administrative burden? Um, and is there a better way to do that? Thank you, I'll provide answers to all of those in, the, in due course. Any other comments or questions? Council Rowan? So I did want to, <laughs> talk a little bit of just about how we got to the permit, uh, away from the permit, and, it, and that was that was really where the fire fire department had their concern was the, the uh, admin, the administrative as well as uh, when we when we issue a permit, it usually means that there's some form of inspection, and this is really just the, and we're also being permissive of of saying that yeah that's okay. This is more the we're just getting notified, it gets entered into the computers for dispatch, so that they know when the calls come in that yeah oh that person is setting them off. Um, any other comments? Not seeing any. All in favor of the first reading and schedule a second. And that's unanimous. Thank you. Next item is 17 051. It's a first reading, schedule a public hearing, and second reading on the proposed amendments to Chapter 313A, the Town of Scarborough Property Tax Relief 
Um, section 5, determination of eligibility and amount of eligibility. I'd like to open that up to any public comments. Not seeing any, we'll close public comments and is there a motion from the floor? So moved. Second. And um, this is also coming from the Ordinance Committee, I believe? Yes. Yes, any, any uh, comment, Mr. Chairman? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this uh, arose because uh, one of our esteemed former council members, Jessica Hobrick, uh, persevered. Uh, and she lobbied me months ago. She then lobbied uh, uh, Councillor uh, uh, Rowan and Councillor uh, Foley. Uh, and uh, Councillor Rowan said, let's at least talk about it. Uh, and as we talked about it at the Ordinance Committee, uh, the proposal was to increase the uh, payment from $500 to $600 under our Senior Property Tax Relief Program. Uh, on balance, we thought this, uh, the pros outweighed the cons uh, of doing this. And I'll just run through them rather quickly. Uh, for one thing, the amendment is simple. Uh, 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 so there is no complexity to, to the change of the ordinance. Uh, a reserve account exists at the present time of $64,000 that Councilor, former Councillor Blaze uh, initiated some years ago when we didn't spend all the money because our program wasn't paying out much money uh, uh, due to the fact that the state program was in disarray. Uh, so we have 64000 The result is that there will be no impact on the budget. The amount of money that was uh, adopted in the budget a few minutes ago, I believe it was $120,000, uh, will not uh, require any adjustment to cover this increased expense. Uh, this $500 figure that we've been pay paying out as a maximum uh, is a figure that has not been raised in a decade. Uh, uh, tax increases during that time have been fairly substantial. Uh, and as a consequence uh, created a hardship on uh, low-income seniors. The state program, as I said, uh, uh, that has been in place is really a shell of what it was 10 years ago. Uh, 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 and this change does not preclude uh, any further changes that we might be able to make when uh, we have two years of data, which is what uh, Craig Friedrich and I, who authored the original uh, 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 ordinance uh, felt was appropriate to see how to make refinements. So on balance, we thought this was the appropriate thing to do. Thank you, Council Caso. So uh, this is um, a, a program that I wholeheartedly support. I think it's one of the foundations that we need to build off of when we look at budget, our budget analysis, because this really speaks to the question of those who can't afford the tax increases, the, the people who need it the most. And I think it's our obligation as a community to, to support those people equally as much as we support other aspects of the budget. I'll support it for the first reading and, and probably support it moving forward, but I do have some reservations about it, and I, I did speak briefly to Councillor Donovan about those. My reservations really are not so much the $100 increase. It's, um, you know, the $65,000 balance that we have my question is, are we reaching the right number of people? Are there other people who qualify that may not know about that? And I would, I would be hesitant to increase the, the dollar value at the risk of losing somebody who may potentially qualify for 500. I'm not saying that we're at that point, but I think another two years worth of data might help us realize, have we maxed out the participation in this program? The other thought was um, really doing a deep dive into the effectiveness of the program and possibly expanding it either to um, a sliding scale to someone who maybe, you know, needs all of their property tax relief done at versus those who, you know, might only benefit from a little bit. Um, so I, I, I think it's a wonderful program. I, the $100, I think it's well intended. I, I'd like to see a deeper dive, though, and a better structuring of the program as a whole uh, in, the, in the future. Yeah, I, I guess it's just a, one is a point of clarification, then two is just kind of an ask for the second read. I, I mean, I, I, I concur with the comments that were just made by, by Council Casa, but the question I had was specifically around the budget impact this year we said was not going to be anything. Is that because we're re using the reserve dollars? So I, I'd just be curious what 
So we have 64,000 in reserves. I'd just be curious what we think that's going to be per year and how long those reserves last. So we can just start looking ahead about what does that do to the budget when we're out of reserves. So just kind of the, the economic impact. And I think that's the sort of economic analysis, financial analysis, that we can do with two years of data. Yeah. yeah. Other comments? Um, two comments. One is um, I like the amendment because it is um, um, if needed. Um, I hope people understand that this is really a Band-Aid solution to a bigger problem that the community needs to have a conversation around regarding tax relief for this particular demographic within town. Um, and I've, I'm not suggesting that I support it, but I'd like to have the conversation so it's like this, the town of York has a program in place in which um, a portion of their taxes can be deferred. Um, it's assessed, but deferred, and a lien is placed against their home until it is sold, therefore providing relief. I'd like us to explore real solutions. This is um, just one piece of that. Um, I would ask maybe to consider, um, rather than having a hard dollar number, which then forces a later council to then look at, um, is to include a modifier that adjusts automatically um, so that there is either an annual adjustment or some type of periodic adjustment so it does, it's not needed to really be reviewed in the future. So if we could consider that, I think um, I'm very much in support of this. Any other comments? Councilor Foley? Um, I just wanted to thank Jessica Holbrook for putting it out there. I uh, wanted to thank Councilor Rowan for obviously doing a superior job of advocacy uh, to get it to come to the council floor for a discussion. And um, I do recognize it's a Band-Aid, uh, but I think sometimes you need a Band-Aid. And uh, this is a good year to do that. So we have the money to do it, and we can do it. So uh, I'd like to take a deeper look at it going forward, but uh, I'm, appre I'm appreciative of folks uh, willing to support it. Just if I could, I, I'm not aware of another community having such a, a robust, mm -hmm. though band-aid as, as it's referred to, robust locally administered and funded program. I, to my knowledge, this is the, by far and away uh, the, the best program that exists. Any other comments from council? Not seeing any. All in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you. Next item is order number 17-052, act to receive a request for discontinuance of a portion of Beach Ridge Road and schedule a public hearing. Um, if I could ask the town engineer to explain this, and then we'll open it up to a public comment. Thank you for staying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Last two items. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to talk um, to the two people that yeah. set the agenda. D Dan would have had it as the first two items. I'm just saying. <laughs> no. um, um, the public works director, Mike Shaw, and I were approached by the owners at 41 Beach Ridge Road. Um, they are in a hardship situation, a non-conforming structure. Um, there was a fire. They are here to speak to that. They can tell you their story. Um, as far as my point of view, looking at the facts and, and looking at what this does to the right of way, and I think I put it in the memo for you, and you can see in an aerial I put in your packet as well. They are right next to, uh, right next to the turnpike, so where the overpass sits. Over time, that road has shifted, um, and with DOT improvements, widened. Our typical right of way is a 50-foot right of way. In that area, we have 150 feet. Um, once, if, if we agree that this makes sense for moving forward, we would still have 105 feet width of that right of way. Um, and so that's why we're talking with public works. It doesn't really impact the function of that road, but it does do a lot for the property owners that, that live there. And so um, if you wanted, they're here to kind of speak to that as well. And if you have any questions for me on what that means functionally, um, we also looked at the ditching and make sure we have rights to be able to maintain that, th things like that. Um, but it is a, a pretty substantial width that is not really needed for our operation. Sure. Any questions for the town engineer? I mean, yes, go ahead. Do, do we have any ideas of the history of how we got to 150 feet of her right of way? Right. So what happened is, first of all, with the turnpike, it was obviously laid out before the turnpike was there. Turnpike comes in. There was the overpass going in. Um, and then as they build out and they relocated it, I think it was in the 2000, um, they would have built 
one next to the other one. So it just kind of, that's what kind of the progression happens in that case. Um, and it just happened to be taking up on one side of the right of way rather mm -hmm. than balancing that. Any other questions for the engineer? No, thank you. And um, if you would like to speak, uh, this is an opportunity uh, for public comment, so you're welcome to speak. I think it's Ms. Williams. Hi, this is my first town council meeting. Um, <laughs> Stephanie Williams, and I'm the property owner at 41 Beechers Road. We had a fire. Um, our house is a total loss. Mm. And we would definitely like to rebuild. But as we're trying to figure out the plans for our new home, we are not in code. Because what is it, the back side of the house? Yeah, we'd like to put a second story on the house. But the way the codes read, uh, the town of Scott, you can't go, you can't go up. I mean, no, I guess a lot of times they allow you to you know, change your square footprint. But I guess with the new codes and stuff, through the beach and all that, they don't allow you to do that. And the way it's set, and I didn't realize at the time we bought the place, we got only like 15 foot frontage. The 50 foot setback is actually 15 feet beyond the back of our house. And we'd really like to put a second story on at least half of it, to put a bedroom and a bathroom upstairs. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're looking at. Yes. Can you possibly ask a question? Sure. Um, and, and this would allow you to, this setback would allow you yes. to do the Absolutely. Yeah, gives us a setback. Because yeah. as the turnpike evolved and the road moved, the, the deed was never changed or the property was never discontinued in the front of the house. So like if you pulled into our part of the driveway, it's actually part of the original road. Yeah. We've been you know, maintaining it and mowing it. Right. We mow it and get the trash up and all that good stuff because it's right over the bridge so everybody's... And <laughs> we know other people on the road have gone down this road before. So we figured it would be a viable option. Mm -hmm. If it helps you, there is an aerial in your packet that I think really shows well. Um, how much of essentially their front yard is actually the yeah. right of way. Yeah. Yes. A question, I guess, maybe through the town manager to them. Um, increasing their, their property size like that would obviously result in an increase in property taxes as well, correct? Correct. Are, like you, correct. are you comfortable? You're over, yes, I mean, that's fine. It's quite understandable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion from um, public comment? Uh, anybody else that would like to speak in public comment? Not seeing any. Uh, motion from council. Not comment. So moved. Oh, second. Second, sorry. Yeah. Um, council member comments? Council Chiazza. Yeah, sorry. Um, so uh, this question is probably more for zoning. Um, why wouldn't they qualify for a variance that we could um, fulfill their needs without having to cede the, the, the property? I've not done the legal analysis required, but uh, the experts coming. That looks yeah. like someone has. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a zoning expert, but right. my understanding from the zoning expert is that um, they could rebuild, but where they had mentioned they want to go to a second story, they're non-conforming, so they can't expand to the second story. Even with a variance. And and that's again where I would need. Um, okay. Brian Longstaff to weigh in, but that was my understanding from from Brian is it's that the there was a problematic aspect of of uh, having a non-conforming use where there's no hardship. The, well, this is a hardship. It's clear. Yeah, you hardship, you would think so, but that's right. not the way the law interprets it. Building in the second story may not be termed as a hardship. See, I think that's the right. difference. Right. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from Council Council Fuller? Question the. The right of way is only used for from DOT. That's it, right? There's never it's not a public access to anything else. No, no. And as the town engineer said, in addition to the roadway, we need to be concerned, and and we've provided for our needs for drainage, stormwater drainage, and such. Sorry, last question. Uh, what does this do to other people on that corridor? Is this a one a one uh, off? correction or will we have to go back through and evaluate everybody on the Beach Ridge corridor for the right of way? No, I, I believe just beyond, the, if you look at the aerial in the yeah, second, I get it. Uh, the two properties to the the north or west, northwest, whatever, yeah. as you yeah. continue up, appear to be in a similar situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but I believe there, after that, the right of way goes back to the kind of mm -hmm. historical mm -hmm. normal width. 
does it make sense to do do this for all three then and do it at once, or is it easier to do it one piecemeal as requested? It was just the urgency where these sure. these homeowners are out of a home. So I was thinking the same thing. We had talked about obviously the abutter next door has a similar situation. However, they have enough front yard and setback, and they are not in need of rebuilding today. And I know this is quite a long process, and okay. they've been very patient and working with staff and, and us really trying to get them here, which is in front of you as a three-step process. So um, it really waiting was, was more of a hardship, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. The width of the right of way when uh, this uh, change occurs, mm -hmm. well, how wide will it be? 105 feet, I put in the memo. That's at the narrowest point. Big. Yeah, it's still double what we would typically see. Any other questions or comments from Council? Not seeing any. All in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next item. Oh, sorry. Next item. Order number 17-053, act on the following request pursuant to Title 23, M MRSA 3025, and the requirements of Section 4 of the Scarborough Street Acceptance Ordinance of the following streets located in Phase 1 and 2 of Denson Crossing Development. Walden Drive, a portion of Colonial Doe Drive, Webster Way, and Colby Drive. Is there anybody that would like to speak to this issue? Not seeing any. Um, is there any questions that we would need the town engineer to answer? If there are none, then I would accept a motion from the council. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions or comments for us to consider? Not seeing any. All in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you. Item number eight is non-action items. There are none. Moving on to item number nine, standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. And it is 9:30. So <laughs> Keep that in mind. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, it's my <laughs> Council Donovan. Uh, uh, Energy Committee met uh, today, uh, reviewed the public safety building energy system. So there's a nice collaboration going on between the uh, Public Safety Committee uh, and uh, uh, and the Energy Committee. Uh, they also uh, gave an update on the compost pilot program having begun. Uh, and the report was that uh, Pleasant Hill neighborhood has really embraced it. Uh, 280, I think, is the number of participants. 270 said they wanted to participate. So that was very good. Uh, Metro Regional Coalition met May 9th. Uh, it was dedicated to an opiate addiction crisis uh, 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 forum. All the superintendents from the seven towns uh, participated. Julie Kuchenberger was there. It really was an, a really superior presentation uh, 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 that uh, two specialists gave. It would benefit the town council, the board of education, and parents to see this presentation, to, to understand not just how to try and fix the problem with the people who are addicted, but trying to save the next generation. So I was very impressed. Uh, ordinance committee hasn't met since the last town council meeting, but we did pull the sign ordinance uh, draft back one more time because we uh, really want to make sure that we have properly tailored uh, the list. That was the uh, admonition from our town uh, attorney, and so we're really looking nice and hard so that uh, it's compliant uh, when we get uh, when we get it before the town council. That's it. Councilman Rowan. The 55-plus uh, uh, program advisory committee um, met. Uh, we had a special guest, Todd Souza. Um, he uh, stood up to a rigorous grilling. And um, there was also a discussion of the uh, senior outdoor space um, and um, general discontentment in terms of where we are, how far along we are. There was hope that it would be ready to spring. Um, and uh, we're still talking about site location. So. Uh, uh, and then there was also a, um, a terrific set of graphs that were shown. So this is this is great television, but um, you can see a very nice <coughs> uh, chart in terms of participation um, um, since the opening of the, the Martin's Point. So uh, there's there's there's, um, 
general excitement about, about the level of participation. Um, and there's also a healthy discussion of the membership fee. Um, <coughs> so um, the Historic Preservation Implementation Committee had two special meetings. Uh, one, um, both of them in regard to 79 County Road, um, specifically with the um, um, possible impending destruction of the Thames property that is there. Uh, we took a, we went in, we looked at the um, the existing structure last week, um, and then um, had a special meeting on Monday uh, in which we met with the uh, new owner of the property, um, Jay Chase and uh, the whole council, or the whole committee, um, and made, um, uh, came to a consensus about uh, what to recommend to the planning board, um, and uh, we're in the process of submitting that. So. Uh, council Foley. Uh, rules and policies have not met since our last meeting, but I just want to remind everybody, uh, we are going to do a full policy review at our next meeting, but that's not until August. We have plenty of time if you have ideas and thoughts around things that you want us to take a look at. Uh, reminder that this Saturday at 9 a.m. is the uh, John Andrew Memorial 5K um, and raising money for the Eastern Trail Close the Gap um, effort and that's starting and ending at O'Reilly's Cure. Um, Conservation Commission uh, met and they are continuing to keep eyes on relevant legislation some of which we heard about tonight in terms of the pesticide piece and uh, potential loss of local control around ordinance pieces. They're also continuing to garner some support around the solar bills um, and then possibly looking to add a liaison to the Pest Management Advisory Committee from the Conservation Commission, but we've discovered that's a little bit more complex than originally anticipated, so I've got to do a little bit more uh, digging and conversation there. Um, Councilor St. Clair will update you on communications, which also met, but a reminder, we do have another round table scheduled for 6 p.m. on Tuesday, May 30th, right here at Town Hall. Councilor St. Clair. I'm good. Councilor Hayes. Yeah, a couple, two quick things. Um, Shellfish Commission, what will be coming in front of ordinance will be um, the, the interest in agricultural leases is taking off, um, both oysters and clamming and other things. We don't really have any language that speaks to that, so they're kind of thinking about that, drafting something, so that's a big topic. Um, there is a new application to do sort of oyster farming on the bottom, which is, there's been a lot of conversation around that. Public safety uh, committee, it still continues to meet. It's moving pretty quickly, site selective. They're really narrowing down to a final building design. They do plan to have on June 14th an open house in the existing fire station and people are invited in to come take a look at the existing station and they're going to kind of do a presentation about what they're thinking about but really are going to open it up to community dialogue and feedback about what they're doing. So just kind of a placeholder of June 14th uh, at the fire station. So you'll, uh, we'll get information out but that's just a quick update. Councilor uh, transportation didn't meet, but long-range planning did. Uh, we reviewed updates to uh, some golf course definitions um, re with regards to an accessibility, or excuse me, an accessories building. Uh, we looked at the Higgins Beach um, character code updates, and um, there's a memo coming out um, on, on what those adjustments will be. There's also going to be a neighborhood meeting surrounding those on June 11th. Um, it should be on the town website. I believe it's open to the public, as far as I'm, I'm aware. Uh, 10 to 1 at the clubhouse. Uh, there won't be any formal presentation, as far as I'm aware of at this point, but um, more of an informal meeting to kind of come in and ask questions. And I think they were talking about possibly having some visuals there of what the corrections might look like. So um, just trying to get that out into the community. Comprehensive plan updates. Um, we were prepping for the May meetings. Um, their important upcoming dates, um, May 22nd, which is this Monday, don't forget there is a joint, there's a, a workshop here uh, in chambers, I believe, uh, for the Long Range Planning Committee and the, um, the council to meet the new consultants that are going to go through the Long Range Planning process. That's, unfortunately, I am out of town on business, um, but as the liaison, I will, I, I certainly am, I think, a little bit up to speed of what's going on there, but um, certainly if there are any questions, let me know. And then the following night is a kickoff uh, for the comp plan with the um, consultants, and I believe that's the public night, if I'm not yes. mistaken. 
um, but also counselors um, welcome to be there as well. Uh, and that is it. Great. And I am nothing as chair. Uh, Town manager's report. Yeah, three quick items. Uh, as the council is aware, we're going back out to the market for bonding. Uh, as part of that process, we do update. We're required to get our ratings updated. We use Moody's and Standards and Poor. Uh, we've had rating calls this week with both, and Moody's actually uh, got back to us. They've affirmed or reaffirmed our rating, so uh, we're staying where we are. No big surprise. Certainly, we don't want to backslide. Uh, but to take that next step uh, will require some additional work over a series of years, frankly. Uh, this Friday, I am interviewing five candidates for planning director position. Uh, we've got uh, a number of folks who will be involved, involved in that process, and I expect the second round will involve, yet again, some, some other folks. I really find it to be beneficial to get a lot of different people to meet these candidates and give me their impressions. So I'm very optimistic about uh, that process. And just to mention, and I'll coordinate this with Chairman Babine, uh, we are in a position finally to replace the devices, uh, your iPads. Um, as part of that, we'll be converting away from SharePoint and to a Google platform for you. So there'll be, we'd like to do a little training to get you set up on how to get to where you need to get and find what you want to do. Uh, so we're thinking as soon as the June 7th meeting, perhaps we can do a workshop, but I'll coordinate those details, but uh, we're ready to roll that out. Thank it actually you. may be a lot of training. <laughs> not, not a little. <laughs> a lot of training. <laughs> um, i take two meetings. Uh, council member comments. Council Chiazza. I have none. It's too late. Council Hayes. Uh, none except for I hope everybody comes out and supports the school budget on June 13th, so thank you. Councilor Sinclair. Good. Council Foley. Um, yeah, I, I guess, you know, Final comment in regards to the budget. What's interesting for me is uh, the truth is that you know the school board doesn't set the budget. We don't set the budget. The voters actually set the budget. So I hope they come out to vote and give us the feedback uh, either way. And uh, obviously we unanimously supported it. So we hope you'll support it. Um, but most importantly, have your voice be heard because that's important. I also wanted to thank the Chamber of Commerce, the Scarborough Chamber of Commerce, for uh, inviting all of us yesterday for the uh, to dinner. Uh, it was a great community building opportunity with all the local leaders and much appreciated that. And that's that. Councillor Nothing, Rome. thank you. Councillor Donovan. Uh, just a quick uh, step back. The uh, planning board met this week. Uh, I know that uh, we've been very interested in the uh, affordable housing elements. Uh, commercial place uh, which was a large, is a large project, uh, got their master plan approval granted by the planning board. That clears uh, a hurdle of the 60%, 40% mix of commercial and residential. Uh, it will still be an issue at the subdivision stage, which is the next hearing, but this is a fairly significant advancement for this project. Uh, Rosvera, as the uh, 79 Muzzy Road project, they have elected to uh, seek 10 bonus units. Five of those are through payments of $20,000 a unit for uh, conservation land, and there is that dual purpose. You can either do affordable housing or conservation land, and then five for the uh, affordable housing component. Uh, that formula calls for 40% of the bonus units must be affordable housing. That would be two units. Uh, uh, on a very happy note, I want to congratulate uh, uh, Sohegan High School senior Evan Kane for being one of only 12 Maine students named as a National Merit Finalist, and that is in rarefied uh, territory. And I also want to uh, recognize a young man by the name of John Hayes, a Scarborough High School sophomore uh, for receiving the school's award this evening as having the highest grade in advanced biology and history, uh, and his mother's very proud of him. <laughs> and someone sitting at the other end of the table is very proud of him, his father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of items. First is I um, also wanted to thank the Chamber for the annual dinner last night for elected officials. It's always wonderful seeing old friends and meeting new ones. Um, we had that at Belvita, which is the retirement community right behind Sitco. 
um, and it was a wonderful evening, so thank you to them. I did want to mention that absentee ballots are um, available, and if you did uh, take out an absentee ballot for the school, bu um, um, school budget before today uh, and has passed as you can return them now because we've passed our budget, um, so you can bring those in. And I did want to mention to you, I did receive word uh, this week from Representative Seth Berry, who is from, I believe, Bodenham, um, and he wanted to thank the Scarborough Town Council for making its uh, statement very loud regarding our solar um, initiatives um, and our solar resolution that was sent up to the legislature. So he, he wanted to thank the council for its action. Um, also wanted to um, um, mention that on next Tuesday, I am not able to attend the uh, meeting with the Comprehensive Plan Consulting and the public um, because of a prior commitment with a um, nonprofit board in Portland. So. Um, unfortunately, I could not, I just could not get out of that meeting. So um, even though that meeting is not run by us, um, other councils will be present, I know. And then I did want to mention uh, regarding the workshop this evening that was, pre that was originally scheduled for 6 o'clock. Um, we did cancel that at the last minute. Uh, the reason is that um, town count, uh, town's um, um, legal counsel as well as um, the um, two abutters to the um, Avenue Two attorneys, as well as the uh, the, uh, the citizens who have hired an attorney, met on Monday, and uh, we felt that it would not, would not really be fruitful for us to interject personal comments at this time while they are working through what appears to be a, um, a very uh, positive uh, engagement. And uh, so we will report back as soon as um, that has hopefully come to, uh, to some type of uh, conclusion or agreement. So I wanted the public to know why we did not meet beforehand. Um, and last but not least is that uh, while we've been um, enthralled within the budget, and I do want to again say thank you to everyone, especially to the council as a whole. It's always very challenging. I hope I didn't bungle it too much in the procedural part tonight. I always feel like I'm tripping over my tongue or um, a couple of shoes. But uh, um, I do really appreciate everybody's involvement, comments, and their input because it is important. Um, I do want to ask you to consider we are scheduling a goals workshop to review where we are in our goals. Um, so I'm going to be sending that information out and um, at that meeting we'll also be talking about Councilor Rowan's recommendation regarding the vision statement that um, we did not include in this year's goal statement. So that will be part of that conversation as well for the Councilor. So and with that I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Right. And that was unanimous. Thank you.